yards in each of the seasons. The running backs will be Joe Vargo, the fullback. He is one of Bucknell's leading pass receivers with 27 catches this season. Matt Walsh and Kevin McElveen will alternate at the tailback spot. Walsh has been the better runner this season, averaging 70 yards a game compared to 37 for McElveen. Yeah, Walsh has really been the main running back that Bucknell is going to go to, and today they're going to look to establish that running game, maybe a little more difficult than in past weeks because Fordham is so tough against the run. The receivers, Damon Garner will be one wide out. He has 17 catches. Whitey Berardinelli, 32 catches for 586 yards on the other side. Corey Zayats, Mark Gentili, and Joe Zabelski will all be in there at tight ends. Good to see Zabelski back from a shoulder injury. Just to give you this stat here, uh, Kevin, last year the combo of Pape and Martin, who were very highly regarded, caught 21 passes for 319 yards on the campaign. This season, Zayats and Gentili have combined for 21 catches, also 294 yards, and they out-touched down him five to two. Well, it's important, I think, to utilize the tight end. It's a, it's a position that gets overlooked a lot, but when you do utilize it, it makes you look good. And of course, with the tight ends Bucknell has this year, you'd be crazy not to use them. I think they have a very talented core, and with Zabelski coming back off the injury, it gives them even more depth. And he's probably the best blocker of the three. Don Watson, a junior at left tackle. Craig Canauer and Vince Mays will alternate at left guard. Ed Fratarelli at center. Eric Rutter at right guard. And Jeff Hart will be at right tackle. Quickly defensively for Fordham, it's a down uh, four. It's a 4-3-4. Four, four. They have three returning starters. Aaron Dockerty, Kurt Geisler, and Ryan Reinert are the three returning starters. The lone uh, backup from a year ago who also started four games is Pat O'Doherty. The linebacker is probably their best player, Mark Blazewski. He's in the middle, and he is a great one for Fordham. He's solid, 93 tackles on the season. Last year, 145 tackles and he had 21 against Bucknell in last year's game. John Clarkson and Jason Jacobs will be the linebackers with him. They only have one backup linebacker on the trip, Dwayne Rivera, very reminiscent to a Bucknell road trip with very few linebackers. Fred DeVito, Mike Wilt will be on the corners. Brad Jordan and Chris Tyrone will be uh, the safeties. They've given up a lot of yards to the secondary, even though they are veteran. They are veteran. They've given up a ton of yards, but they also lead the Patriot League in interceptions with 11, and I think with all the teams trying to exploit that weak secondary, of course you're going to get a few interceptions. Bob Hagan will kick off. He's a freshman, has the ball teed up in the middle of the field. Walsh and Bernardini standing at the five. Bernardini far side, Walsh near side. Fordham won the toss, elected to defer, and uh, Bucknell elected to take the ball. Bucknell will move from right to left in the first quarter from the closed end of the field to the open end of the field. Hagan runs up to the ball, gets the foot into it. It's a high end over end kick. It'll be taken by Bernardini on the 11, in the middle of the field of the 15 to the 20 to the 30, out to about the 33 yard line, maybe close to the 34 yard line, a return of 23 for Brad Bernardini, and that is almost his longest of the season. The previous long was 24 yards. And that keeps up Bucknell's good return yardage. They did it last week against Holy Cross, and they're doing it again this week. That middle return wall has been very solid over the past three or four games, and you saw it right there with the big game. Bucknell is going to open with the double tight ends. Gentili on the left side, Zayats on the right side, Berardinelli to the left, Garner to the right. The lone back is Walsh behind the freshman quarterback, Peter Hardeville. Six-man down line for Fordham. Fordham will come after you with pressure. Hardeville will roll to the right side and then slip back on the 26. He will lose eight on the play. It looked like he was rolling right either for Gentili, the tight end underneath, or Garner on a fly pattern down the right side. But the field is a little bit damp in warm-ups, Kevin. We saw people losing their footing. Yeah, the field I don't think is fully recovered from that Brown game back a month ago. On that last play, Garner had Chris Tyrone, the cornerback, beat by at least three steps. So I think if Hardeveld didn't slip on that play, there would have been a good chance that pass would have gone completed for a big gainer. Second down, now an 18 for Bucknell. Backs in an offset eye. Vargo in front of Walsh. Walsh will carry on second and 18, get a couple to the 28. And now it'll be a third down and 16 coming up for Bucknell. So nothing like, uh, from a defensive standpoint, getting the opponent on their first drive in a third and long situation. This season, Bucknell 44% on third downs. And Fordham defensively has done a good job, only allowing the first down 35% of the time. And Fordham defense is showing their toughness against the run. Uh, Blajewski led the charge there on that last play. Third down and 16. Backs in an eye. Berardinelli to the right. Garner to the left. It's a four-man front this time for Fordham with very wide splits. Hardeville back to pass in the pocket, has some time, throws over the middle, and it's intercepted by Brad Jordan at the Bucknell 40-yard line. It was intended for Whitey Berardinelli, but the pass was thrown high, and Jordan comes up with a pick. It is the free safety second interception of the season and the 11th of his career. And Jordan, an All-American candidate, did a good job of getting in front of Whitey on that last pass, and who knows, Fordham 
may know that Whitey is the main man that they go to, especially when they need a first down. And Jordan was right on his tail that time and got right in front of him to make that play. It was a nice interception. So Fordham, the team with more interceptions than any other in the Patriot League, comes up with one on the first drive. Pullman, the quarterback, he'll toss it to the right side to Ross. Ross inside the 40, inside the 35, inside the 30, and he's finally knocked down at the 26 of Bucknell. A pickup of 13 for the tailback, Chris Ross. Great blocking on the right side by David Neese and Tim Sullivan, and the Bucknell defense that time was nowhere to be found. I'll tell you, that 3.6 yards per carry average for Ross will go up after that run. 13 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the first quarter. Just joining us, Fordham's Brad Jordan intercepted a Peter Hardevelle pass at the 39-yard line, and Fordham set up in business with their first drive. Iacello in front of Ross in the eye, two receivers to the left side, Bucknell on the 4-3. Hand off to Ross. Ross will pound his way inside the 25 to about the 23. We'll call it a pickup of three and a half, second down and about six and a half to seven to go for a first down. Jackson, good job on that tackle. The 6'2", 210-pound sophomore filling in for that depleted injury-plagued linebacking position, filling in for Castellini. And that's another situation where Bucknell and Fordham have similarities is a lot of backups in the linebacking spot have been injured. Second down and seven from the Bucknell 24. Three receivers to the left side. Ross, the lone back, the tight end Strauss on the right side. Ross will carry up the middle. He may get a yard to the 23. Fordham will be looking at a third down and six. John Lusk and Cecil Boone and Russ Strohecker on the tackle for Bucknell. And Bucknell doing it again this week up the middle. They're not allowing a lot of yards on the ground, especially between the tackles. And I think if any team's going to run on the bison, they're going to try to go off tackle. Of course, that first play to Ross went off tackle. I don't think you're going to have a lot of luck running inside and up the middle against Bucknell. They called that last one for no gain. The ball remains to the 24. Potamusis to the left side. Garlic to the right. Ross the lone back. As Iacello in the slot. Six-man front for Bucknell. They will come. Pullman will throw. A flag is down. Potamusis makes the catch to the 20. Breaks a tackle from Noel. Gets to the 10. Inside the 5. And down to the 2. The question is, which way is the flag going to go? It was dropped past the line of scrimmage. Fordham is clapping. So it appears it's going to be holding defensively against Bucknell. Bucknell. No, it's offsides against Bucknell, and Fordham is going to decline the play, and Potamusis will take it all the way down to the three, a gain of 21, and it'll be first and goal for the Rams at the Bucknell three-yard line. Yeah, Pullman just threw a pass out into the flat to Potamusis, and Noel had his arms wrapped around him, and Potamusis wiggled away from him to break that play. It would have been a very minimal gain if the tackle was made, but that's what happens when you miss tackles against this tough wide receiving core that Fordham throws at you. They're going to score or get some big yardage if you don't bring them down. Fordham now going with double tight ends, a wing back, and the backs in an eye. It's Iacello in front of Ross. Fordham first and goal at the Bucknell three. Pullman to the tailback, Ross. Ross plowing to the goal line. Is he in? I think he's going to be just short. They're going to mark him at the one. It's a gain of two for Chris Ross, and it'll be second down and goal from inside the one-yard line. And Bob, this is the second week in a row that the Bison have allowed an opponent to just steamroll right down the field. Of course, Holy Cross took the opening, their opening drive and punched in a score, and uh, Fordham's doing the same thing here. 11 minutes and 15 seconds to go. Fordham now with double tight ends and a straight tee. They have the ball inside the one on second down and goal. Pullman looking over the Bucknell defense, gives it off to Ross. Ross over the left side. He's going to be awfully close. The officials have yet to signal whether it's a touchdown, and now they say touchdown. Fordham Rams on a one-yard run by Chris Ross. It is his second touchdown of the season, and with 10.58 to go in the first quarter, Fordham cashes in the interception for six. And Fordham looked very, very impressive on that drive. They didn't do a whole lot of fancy things. Had a couple of long runs, and that pass and the missed tackle was the big play of that whole drive, which gave them excellent field position. I think if you give anybody uh, a chance inside the five, that a score is definitely imminent. And senior Chris Zavino will kick. He was three for three last week on extra points. Potamusis to hold. And snapping will be Mark Mooney to try to give Fordham their seventh point. Nice snap, nice hold. Savino's kick is up, and it just does squeak over the crossbar. And with a timeout on the field, 10.58 to go in the quarter. It is now Fordham 7 and Bucknell nothing. We'll be back with a kickoff in 60 seconds. Emergencies, a part of life requiring money and fast. That's where shirt sleeve bankers can help. With guaranteed 15-minute loan approval, Northern Central Bank can offer fast relief to borrowing needs. Your local Shirtsley banker is schooled and skilled in the ways of personal credit. When you need cash and fast, see Northern Central Bank Shirtsley bankers, because the only thing up their sleeve is lending muscle. 
Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. There are a lot of delicious reasons to come to McDonald's for breakfast, but here are the logical ones. McDonald's has all kinds of foods that are under a buck, like a breakfast burrito, a sausage biscuit, a fresh-baked muffin, and right now an Egg McMuffin sandwich is just 99 cents. Yep, just 99 cents. We do the cooking and the cleaning. Our drive through windows move fast. We've got the four food groups, and we treat you right. Breakfast at McDonald's. It's just plain smart. What you want is what you get at McDonald's today. At participating McDonald's for a limited time, prices may vary, plus tax. Well, Fordham scores first. They lead it 7 to nothing, and Kevin, they cash in the turnover. Brad Jordan, the senior safety, intercepted the Hardeveld pass at the Bucknell 39, and Fordham made it look easy. Six plays. Six plays, 39 yards, and three minutes and 25 seconds on the total time that he lapsed on that drive, and Fordham has to feel good about themselves coming into Bucknell and jumping out quick 7 to nothing. For Fordham, it is only their fifth rushing touchdown this season now, and seven plus games. Hagen will kick off again. Bernardini and Walsh back to return it. This is a much shorter kick. Walsh will field it on the 15, come across the 20 in the middle to the 25. He'll get to about the 28 yard line. Fordham does a nice job of staying in their lanes and coming up with a tackle. On the tackle, Jason Zapatka for the Fordham Rams. So the Bucknell will start their second possession. About the same spot they started their first one. First and 10 from their own 28. Peter Hardeville back out there at quarterback for the Bucknell Bison. This time it'll be Kevin McElveen at the tailback spot. He is averaging 3.2 yards a carry, has 10 catches, but remember three of those were in the game's, the season's opening game against Bloomsburg. Backs in an offset eye, Berardinelli to the right, Garner to the left, Fordham showing a four-man front and four linebackers. Hardeveld handed off to McElveen. McElveen will get across the 30 to the 31 for a three-yard gain. On the tackle that time was defensive end Aaron Dockerty for Fordham. Second and seven coming up for Bucknell. Again, Fordham just scored on a one-yard run by Chris Ross on a second down and goal play. We have ten and a half minutes to go in the first quarter, and again, the Rams lead it a touchdown to nothing. Berardinelli to the right, Garner to the left, McElveen will go on a wing to the right side, Bargo the lone back behind Hardeveld, five-man front this time for the Fordham Rams. Second and seven for the Bison, Hardeveld on a long count, back to pass, give it off on a draw to Vargo. a flag is down on the right side, and Vargo will get not back to the line of scrimmage, he will lose a yard back to the 30-yard line, linebacker John Clarkson, the transfer from Delaware, who has 37 tackles this season on the stop. And Fordham's really showing their strength against the run. Bucknell has not been able to do a whole lot of anything up front. And that Fordham defense really converging and making big plays. Fordham, though, may have been a little overzealous as they're called for offsides. Bucknell, uh, Captain Whitey Bardinelli talking with the officials. And certainly Bucknell will take it not only to get the down again, but to get five yards because they lost a yard on that play. That's true. And those Fordham linebackers like to cheat up on the line, and they're very, very aggressive and that uh, over-aggressiveness may have hurt them on that last play, getting the offsides penalty. Break for Bucknell. They'll look at a second down and three as the ball comes out to their own 36-yard line. Berardinelli and Garner now in a twin set, both to the left side. The tight end is on the right side. Vargo in the slot. McElveen the lone back. McElveen will carry to the left side, try to get around the corner, across the 35 to the 40, and he's run out of bounds by Blazewski at the 44-yard line. It'll be a first down and a pickup of seven or eight for Kevin McElveen, and that time Fordham just didn't have containment, Kevin. He kept bouncing to the outside and finally had enough real estate to turn the corner and get a pretty nice game. Yeah, McElveen did a good job running, and he kept his legs going. Kurt Giesler a tackle, and Aaron Torgler, Torgler, the defensive end in that play, had McElveen in the backfield, but McElveen was able to break free of those tackles and to break it outside. Bucknell now with three wide receivers as Bernardini goes to the left, Berardinelli and Garner to the right. That's the wide side of the field. Vargo in the slot, McElveen the lone back, and no tight ends. Hardeveld on a straight drop, has time, looks, throws it out in the flat, and throws it to nobody. Lou Maranzana wanting a holding call on the... Defensive back Fred DeVito, he's giving the official an earful down there, but uh, just a poor pass that time by Hardeveld. Uh, he had McElveen more in the middle in the flat, and he threw it to the Bucknell bench. And Bucknell now will have a second and 10 coming up from their own 44. It looked like it was an attempted screen pass that never really developed. I think they were trying to set up blocking for McElveen, and uh, Hardeveld probably thought McElveen was going in the flat instead of the middle of the field. 9.39 to go in the quarter, Fordham 7, Bucknell nothing. First quarter action, Fordham with a five-man front, Hardeville with one back, three receivers go to the right side. 
Hardeville will roll to the right side, has some time, good blocking from behind. Hardeville will throw on the run and throw it for Berardinelli. No flag. Jordan came over the top of Berardinelli, knocked the ball away, and they'll say it was a good defensive play, and now Bucknell will be looking at a third and ten from their own 44. Jordan has been very active in the first two drives defensively for Fordham. Well, Jordan, the free safety and the strong safety, number 26, Chris Tyrone, in the vicinity of that last pass, and Hardeveld forced that last pass as well. He was lucky that that didn't get picked off. It's the second time we've seen Hardeveld make a very, very shady decision on whether to throw, throw the ball or not. Garner and Berardinelli wide to the right, Bernardini to the left, four-man front this time for Fordham. McElveen the lone back. Bucknell needs to get to the 46 of Fordham to keep the drive alive. Fordham's linebackers will blitz. Seven will come. Hardeveld being chased. Gets away from the pressure. Now will run. He'll get across the 45 to the 46. It'll be a gain of two. Brian Vesey, a backup safety, will make the tackle with help uh, from uh, several others for Fordham. Kurt Geisler also in there, but Fordham did what they wanted. They flushed Hardeveld out of the pocket, made him commit. He couldn't throw, and they'll give up a two-yard gain on uh, third down and ten. It's now four Fourth down and eight, Jason Fralick will come on to punt. He's punted seven times this season for a 37-yard average. Double safety back there for Fordham. Nice pass from center by Gary Petras, and Fralick's kick is a tumbler. It'll bounce at the 25, and then take a Fordham roll back out across the 30 to the 32. He will lose seven yards on the roll that time, and on the kick, only 27 yards for Jason Fralick. And Fordham will start at first and 10 from the 31 and a half their own. You know, Bob, back to that last play, Garner had Mike Wilt, the corner, beat on that last play. And I think the blitzing linebackers forced Bucknell to give up a little too much up front. And it allowed the tackles to break in and get penetration. It flushed Hardeville out of the pocket. I think if he had a little bit of time, he might have got that pass off. Garlic and Potamusis, the two receivers for Fordham, both go to the left, the wide side. Strauss on the tight end on the right side. One back, that's Ross. Bucknell with a four-man front. Ross will carry up the middle, get out across the 35, plow to the 37 or 38. It's going to be the pickup of a better part of six yards for the Fordham Rams on first down. Jan Kilpalainen and Shane Limpus on the tackle for Bucknell. And coming into the game, Fordham not very good on the ground at all. They only averaged about two and a half yards a carry, and today... They're really doing it on the ground. Ross is the only ball carrier on the ground. He has six carries for 25 yards, so that is a little less than five yards a carry. Second down and five officially after the five-yard gain by Ross. He again is the lone back. He will carry again, and this time he'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. John Lusk and Russ Strohecker there to clamp down on Ross. As I say, he'll be fortunate to get a yard gain. We'll call it no gain. Third and five coming up from the Fordham 37. Down under eight minutes to go in the first quarter. Fordham leads it by the count of seven to nothing, and Bucknell looking for a stop on third down. This season, Bucknell has given up third down conversions 47% of the time, which is pretty high. Fordham offensively pretty low, has only converted 30% of the time. Pullman the quarterback, as Iacello and Ross in the eye on third and five. Long count. Pullman back to pass, rush comes, Pullman steps up in the pocket, now will pull it down and run, and now will try to throw it, and the ball is batted by Dan Zappa down at the line of scrimmage, and John Lusk almost intercepts it again. That Zappa to Lusk play has almost worked three weeks in a row. And also number 75, Shane Limpus had his hand in, in on that as well. He almost came down with it, but a good job by Zappa to get the hands up and deflect that pass. I think that's something that has to be done on each and every play when you're rushing a quarterback. Those, when you get the hands up and deflect the pass, anything can happen. Fourth down and five. Steve Mizzenegro will come on to punt. He's punted 55 times this season for an average of 34 yards a kick. Big rush for Bucknell, but Mizzenegro just does get it away. It's a high spiraling kick. Walsh will be chased back to the 21 to catch it. Come up the left side, get knocked out of bounds at the 32. It'll be a return of 11 for Matt Walsh, which is one yard under his season high. A 44-yard kick for Muzzinigro, he took his time getting it off, but uh, that was a nice, nice kick. And it was up in the air long enough to allow the coverage team to get down there and make the play on Walsh. Walsh didn't get a whole lot on that return at all. First and 10 now for the uh, Bucknell Bison, starting at their own 32-yard line. Seven minutes and 18 seconds to go in the first quarter. This is Bucknell's third drive of the game. Garner and Berardinelli wide to the right side. Bucknell has started roughly at their own 30-yard line on all three possessions. Backs in an eye, Vargo in front of Walsh. This time Fordham in a four-man front. Hand off to Walsh, straight up the middle. Walsh across the 35 to the 36. It'll be a gain of four for Matt. Second down and six coming up for Bucknell. On the tackle that time, Jason Jacobs, a linebacker for Fordham. Kurt Geisler made the tackle. And on that play, number 77, Don Watson. 
the left tackle for Bucknell made a nice seam for Walsh to run up, run up in, and he knocked Geisler, the would-be tackler, right away out of that play. Second down and six after the four-yard gain. Berardinelli and Walsh both wide to the left side. Garner to the right. Vargo the lone back behind Hardeveld. The fullback Vargo will carry. Vargo fumbled the football, and it is recovered by Jeff Hart out across the 40 at the 41. It'll be a gain of six yards or five yards on the play. Hart, the offensive lineman, probably got Bucknell an extra three or four yards by falling on the football because Vargo was hit inside the 40-yard line and the ball rolled forward. And luckily for Bucknell, they did get that fumble because they can ill afford yet another turnover the way this offense has come out today. Three and out, three and out. Third down now in a short two. Bucknell going with double tight ends. Baxson and I, Fordham with a seven-man front. This is going to be power football. Hard of to Walsh. He's hit in the backfield and will lose a yard back to the 39-yard line. Tremendous line surge by Fordham. Geisler had surged in there. Wojewski was also there. And Fordham's entire left side of their defense, Kevin, beat Bucknell's right side, the favorite side, at the point of attack. And also number six, number 26, Chris Tyrone, the strong safety, was blitzing on that play. He jumped into the backfield as well. So Fordham very active on defense. Fralick will punt, big rush, he gets knocked down, but no flag is called. Coming up with the punt at the 25 is Jordan. Jordan will return it to the 30 before he slips. It'll be a return of five, 37 yards on the kick that time for Jason Fralick. So Fordham will get the ball back, 531 to go in the first quarter. They'll have it on their own 30-yard line, and both teams seem to be kind of ping-ponging it back and forth taking it from the 30, punting it to the other 30, and maybe giving one first down to each of the teams before forcing the punt. And a lot of that has to do with Bucknell's offense just not being in sync today at all. They've had trouble running the ball, and of course the passing game is just not there early on here in the first quarter. Garlic to the left side, Potamusas to the right side, Iacello in the slot to the right side, Ross the lone back, four-man front for Bucknell. Pullman hands it off to Ross. Ross gets across the 30, sheds a tackler to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, comes forward to the 50 before Rob Frost, the free safety, will make the tackle. A run of 20 yards for Chris Ross, and Bucknell's defense today has had a little trouble wrapping up and making tackles. And Ross made him pay right there. Frost, luckily, he did make the play because Ross may have gotten another 15 to 20 yards, maybe even waltzed into the end zone for a touchdown. Down to five minutes and 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Fordham has looked the more intense team. One of the questions we asked Lou Maranzana about the team starting fired up. They have not started fired up, fired up today. They have been listless in the first 10 minutes of the game. First and 10 at midfield for Fordham. Ayacello, the lone back, he'll carry over the left side. Ayacello will get tripped up at the 49 by Strohecker and Sean Browser. It'll be a gain of one, second and nine coming up. Browser, the uh, junior from Hartville, Ohio, started last week and I thought did a credible job filling in for uh, Boone and uh, Olympus at a new position defensive tackle. And that he did, and Bucknell with their guys back in now with Olympus and Boone back, doesn't seem to be helping right now, that's for sure. Fordham is really having their way on the ground here against the Bison. Second down and nine after the one yard gain. Pullman on a long count. Bucknell with a four-man front. Pullman tossing to the left side. That's Scott Helverson who's in the game. Helverson will spin out of the grasp of Dan Zappa. Rob Frost will make the final tackle, but only a short gain of maybe two yards. And Fordham now will have a third and seven coming up from the Bucknell 47-yard line. They need to get to the 40 for the first down. When the next play comes, there'll be less than four minutes to go in the quarter in which Fordham leads 1-0 on a one-yard run by Chris Ross on their first possession that was set up by a Brad Jordan interception. Garlic and Sean Harris to the left side. Potamus is to the right. The lone back is Iacello behind Pullman. Third and seven. Pullman back to pass. Throws over the middle. In and out of the hands of Garlic. Strohecker went for the hit on Garlic and really wasn't looking where the ball was. If he had, he might have had a chance to intercept it. But Strohecker doing a nice job of playing the man, making sure that the man wouldn't slip by him. It'll now be fourth and seven, and Musa Negro will come on to punt again for the Rams. Bernardini and Walsh back to return it. They'll stand on the 10-yard line awaiting the punt. Back to Snapping the ball on uh, punts is Aaron Dockerty, a defensive end. Bucknell with a nine-man front. It is fourth and seven from the 47. Musa Negro will punt. Bucknell with a good rush, and Walsh will catch it on the 13. Go to the sideline and slip at the 15, and it'll be a two-yard return. Walsh on the return. And about a 34-yard kick that time from Musa Negro, so Bucknell will start with their weakest field position of the day, first and 10 on their own 15-yard line. 
And the footing seems to be pretty bad down there, Bob. It's the second time that we've seen a Bucknell punt returner lose their footing. Well, Jordan lost his footing after a five-yard return for Fordham, so the field, while it looks to be in decent shape, appears to be kind of tough footing for, for both teams out there. Bucknell with yet another drive. Garner going to the left side. Double tight ends, the backs and an eyes. Bucknell with a pretty simple set. It's a toss left side to McElveen. McElveen gets back to the line of scrimmage at the 15, and that is it. Fordham did a nice job of stringing him out. Kurt Geisler, who we've called several times today, was the first man to get to him. The right tackle on defense has four tackles for losses coming into this game and uh, 36 tackles on the season. He has been very active, and Bucknell is needing to get somebody on him with some blocks. And Bucknell has yet to establish a running game. And, of course, we talked about that in the pregame, how important it is for a guy like Walsh to have over 100 or even McElveen to get in the mix. And uh, just hasn't been happening so far today. McElveen officially lost a yard. Lone back is Vargo. Is McElveen on the wing. Hardavell back to pass. Throws it out in the flat. McElveen will make the catch at the 18. Get wrestled out of bounds at the 20 by Brad Jordan, the free safety. It'll be a pickup of six for Bucknell. And it'll bring up a third down and about five to go for a first down. 2.50 to go in the quarter. It's Fordham seven and Bucknell with nothing. Tell you in that last play, Blazewski did a good job of getting out in the flat to defend McElveen. Jordan made the, made the play, but uh, it's very impressive, a middle linebacker getting over in the flat that quickly. Third down and five coming up for Bucknell. They need to get to the 25, their own, to keep the drive alive. Hardeville facing a four-man front. Hardeville back to pass, throwing it left side, and way overshoots Corey Zayat to the 30-yard line. It's incomplete. And Jason Freilich will come on to punt again. It'll be Freilich's second, excuse me, third punt of the day. He's punted for 25 and 37 yards so far in the game. Back to return the kick for the uh, Fordham Rams. This time it'll be Sean Mackey. He's back there along with Brad Jordan. Mackey on the far side and uh, Jordan on the near side. Not much of a rush for Fordham. And Freilich gets a very low kick. It'll bounce to the Bucknell 45. Mackey will pick it up on the 50 and get hammered there by linebacker Russ Strohecker. Probably lost yard on the return back to the 49-yard line. Poor kick that time by Freilich, but uh, Fordham decided that is Mackey decided that he didn't want to take a chance with the roll. I think that's the smart thing to pick the ball up and did a nice job of hanging on to the ball. Yeah, especially after Strohecker laid the wood to him on that last play, knocked him right back. And uh, again, good punt coverage by the Bison. But offensively, Bucknell just not doing it at all. 30 yards on the kick that time for... Uh, for Freilich. Fordham going with the solo back that is Ross. A couple of wing backs left side. They're going to run to the power side. That's the left side of the 50 to the 45. He'll be knocked down at the 42 yard line. A pickup of eight, maybe nine. Good blocking by Fordham. Tom Wickersham, who had been hurt on the offensive line for Fordham in the preseason, started six games last year, is back starting at left guard, and he was the guy that really made that play go. And he's making a big difference so far today. Fordham has been able to neutralize Bucknell's defensive front and actually gain a lot of yardage. Bucknell giving a lot of yardage on first down running situations. We'll see if Fordham might want to throw it to Garlic, the lone wideout. They've got a second and one. This is almost a free play from the Bucknell 42. Bucknell with a four-man front. They're going to go to the run. Ross may barely get back to the line of scrimmage. I think he's going to get a yard to the 40 for a first down. But uh, again, Bucknell's defensive line did a nice job of not allowing much. Dan Zappa on the tackle that time, the linebacker making the stop on Chris Ross, but again, they only needed a yard for the first down and they got it. You know, when you give up nine yards on the first play, on a first down play, uh, you know, you're playing right into the hands of the offense and gee, a yard isn't a whole lot to get on offense. Down to a minute 35 to go in the first quarter. Fordham seven, Bucknell nothing. Fordham, after the short punt, started the drive at their own 49. They've advanced it now to the Bucknell 40. Iacello out of the backfield in motion to the left side. Pullman will throw. Throws it out on the right flat, making the catch to tight end John Strauss. He's hit immediately by strong safety Jim Jaroshak. It'll be a pickup of five to the 40, excuse me, to the 35-yard line of Bucknell. Second down and five coming up for the Rams. Good coverage by Jaroshak. He was right on the tight end Strauss on that play. And Pullman showing pretty good poise in the pocket, unloading again, that ball. Again, this is his third start. His second start was his best game when he threw for 180 yards and three touchdowns last week against Lafayette. Second and five for the Rams from the Bucknell 30. Three receivers go to the left side. Iacello the lone back. Bucknell with a four-man line. Handoff strip the middle. Iacello will get a yard to the 34. Bucknell's defensive line that time whipped Fordham's offensive line at the point of attack. John Lusk on the tackle. It'll now be a third down coming up and four and a half to go. 
third down and four. And that's where this game's going to be won up front. I think whoever can take control of that line of scrimmage is going to come out the victor today. And so far, it's been a tug of war so far. Fordham's offensive line won it, is, was winning it early, and now it seems like Bucknell's starting to pull their end of the line a little more. Third down and four, 13 seconds to go in the first quarter. Pullman looking over the four-man front, three receivers to the left side. Helverson alone back. Pullman will roll to the left side. The rush is coming. Pullman will stop, and Pullman will get sacked. Back at the 42 of Bucknell, and it'll be a loss of seven or eight on the play. Zappa, Malin, Jessup, and a couple of others were there for Bucknell, and that is a huge sack because now it'll force Fordham to punt on fourth and long, and Muzinigro will come out for the third time today, and that is the end of the first quarter. The score, it is Fordham 7, Bucknell nothing. We'll be back in 60 seconds. The folks at Bison Beverage help you plan your next one. Bison Beverage has a full line of domestic and imported beers, plus soda, mixers, snacks, and setups. Located at the corner of Routes 15 and 45 in Lewisburg, Bison Beverage offers convenient drive through service. And each week, be sure to check out the beer and soda specials. So whether your next party is a tailgate or a whole house full, stop by Bison Beverage. They'll help you with everything from soda to beer to snacks. Bison Beverage, Routes 15 and 45, Lewisburg. Carl Hager Chevrolet in Milton has the new car or truck that you are looking for. Whether you want a sporty Geo or rock solid work truck, Carl Hager has it. Because it's the largest volume Chevy dealer in five counties, Carl Hager has the greatest selection. Looking for a luxury van, Corvette, or family wagon? No problem. Carl Hager can put you behind the wheel of the vehicle that best suits your needs. And once you're the proud owner of a new Chevy car or truck, Carl Hager's number one service department will help you keep it running for miles and miles. Carl Hager Chevrolet, 1200 Front Street, Milton. Mazzanegro on the punt on fourth down and 13 from the Bucknell 43-yard line. Just starting the second quarter, it's Fordham 7 and Bucknell nothing in Patriot League football action. High snap, and Mazzanegro puts it down and kicks it. It's going to bounce at the 5 and roll, dead at the 1 yard. I know they're going to say it went into the end zone and hit the uh, pylon. In the corner of the end zone, Fordham could not down it. It took like a left turn, and as it was hooking, it hit the corner of the pylon, which meant it went into the end zone, and that is going to be about a 19-yard break for Bucknell because it would have been Bucknell's ball at the 1 instead of at the 20, and Bucknell now is switching quarterbacks. They're going to Rob Gluss for the start of the second quarter. We had a feeling we might see them both. This season, he's completed 56% of his passes for 308 yards. We're going to get into a little bit of discussion as far as the two quarterbacks here in a second, Kevin. I know you and I both thought that they should have started Gluss today. We'll see what Rob Gluss has to offer. First down and 10. The lone back is Walsh. Gluss will hand off to Walsh. Going over the left side, he'll get maybe a yard before the Fordham defense closes him down at the 21. I like Gluss to start because he has been your number two guy all season. And from what the coaches have said, if they were on the level, the two coaches, the two quarterbacks, Kopp and Gluss, were very, very even. To me, you shouldn't penalize the guy for just one bad outing. I think the job should have been his to lose. Oh, that's, there's no doubt about it, and Gluss has a lot more experience. He's been in game situations at this level, not the JV level, and, uh, you know, I think it was a bad decision to start Hardeveld here today. Second down and nine coming up for the Bison. Gluss back to pass. Rush comes. Gluss throws it over the middle. The flag is down, and it looks like Blazewski may be caught for holding on Walsh. A flag is down, as I say, at about the 25-yard line, and the way Blazewski is reacting, he thinks that the call is against him as the Fordham lineman and linebackers very active. They try to jam the receivers at the line of scrimmage. And Blazewski, very, very fleet of foot for a linebacker. He was right out there step for step with Walsh, and uh, he must have held him or something because Gluss threw the ball out in the flat, and Walsh is nowhere to be found. Interesting. It's not holding the call. It's an offsides call for the second time today against Fordham. When it looks like the flag was dropped further upfield, they give the offsides or the encroachment signal. Second down now and three coming up for the uh, Bison offense. Garner and Berardinelli both go wide to the right side. Walsh the lone back. Walsh will carry over right tackle. Walsh fumbles the football and falling on it and recovering it for Fordham is a strong safety. Chris Tyrone, it's the second turnover of the football game for Bucknell. And once again, Fordham set up in glorious field position. They'll have a first and 10 at the Bucknell 27. And that ball rolled right into Tyrone's hands. He almost went running with that ball, maybe even for a touchdown if he didn't lose his footing. He slipped momentarily and then went right to the ground. And what a big break for Fordham. So the fumble recovery will come at the 
22-yard line of Bucknell. I may have said at the 27, but it is at the 22. First and 10 for the Rams. After this play, we'll take a look at the first quarter statistics. Pullman has his backs in an eye. First and 10, Bucknell with a five-man front. Pullman give it off to Ross up the middle. Ross slips as he gets inside the 20. He'll go to the 16. It'll be a pickup of six on the play. Second and four coming up for Fordham. And the first half stats show that Fordham has really dominated this game so far. Seven to nothing is the score. Fordham five first downs compared to Bucknell's one. Completions, attempts, interceptions. One for four, six yards for Hardeveld. And Pullman two for four for 27. So it hasn't been an aerial display. We'll get to the rushing yardage after this play. Second down and four after the six yard gain. Backs in an eye for Fordham as they have the ball on the Bucknell 16. Pullman play fakes to Ross. Rolls to the right side. Stops and he'll get sacked. The flag is down. They may call Pullman for grounding. I think that maybe his knee was on the ground as he let it go the officials will conference sean browser is signaling that maybe it is a holding call against fordham and it is going to go against fordham i think they're going to say that the pass was not made they're going to put the ball down where pullman was sacked and bucknell's going to have the choice of either the sack or the holding call and to me there's no decision on this one it's a no-brainer you take the sack burn the down and bring up third down and about 16 to go for a first down oh you have to and Bucknell, another big break here. It seems like every time Bucknell's back is against the wall, according to field position, they've been getting out of it. Of course, the punt going into the end zone was a big break for Bucknell. And, of course, here with the sack and having a choice, knocking Fordham back. So they will take the play. The sack will both move the ball back to the 28-yard line, so it'll be a 12-yard loss. Fordham will now be looking at a third down and about 17 to go for a first down. We'll take a look at the rushing stats after this play. Garlic and Potamusas both wide to the left side. That's the wide side of the field. Pullman looking over to four-man front. Pullman to the run, gives it off to Ross. Ross will get a couple to the 26 before he's wrapped up. And Fordham is going to send out Bob Hagen for a long field goal. He's two for eight this year. He's had two blocked. And as long as a 45, and quickly, uh, Kevin, the rushing stats. Bucknell, nine rushes for 15 yards. Total plays, total offense, 13 plays, 21 yards for Bucknell. For Fordham, 14 carries, 45 yards. Overall, 18 total plays, 72 yards total offense. On the ground for Fordham, Ross leads the way, 10 carries, 54 yards and a touchdown. Well, this will be a 43-yard kick for Bob Hagen. He has made a 45, again, has had two blocked, and is two for eight. He is a freshman. Potamusas to hold. They'll kick the ball, and it's blocked. Bucknell has blocked the field goal, and the ball is loose and covered by Russ Strohecker. There was a lot of blue inside, so maybe old Moe is going to switch right here into the blue and orange. Bucknell came right up the middle, blocked the Bob Hagen field goal, and the Bison will take over first and 10 on the 32. What a day Russ Strohecker is having at linebacker. He gets in there. Pick recovers the ball after it was blocked. He made some made a big play on a punt return. Seems like he's the spark plug today. And if only his great play could carry over offensively, I think Bucknell would be in pretty good shape. Bucknell blocked a field goal last year. Jan Kilpalainen did it in the Bronx for Bucknell. Rob Gluss back to pass on first down. Gluss steps up into the pocket, and Gluss will get sacked back at the 29-yard line. He'll lose three on the play, second down and seven. Down to 12 minutes to go in the half, seven to nothing in favor of... The Fordham Rams. Bucknell has yet to get anything going offensively. Bringing in a couple of tight ends for this formation. Zayats and Gentili both in there now as Joe Vargo, the fullback, will come out. Second down and 13. Garner to the left side. Berard and Elliott to the right side. Back is Kevin McElveen. He's the lone back as Bucknell goes with double tight ends and a receiver to the left and right. Plus back to pass on second and 13. Throws it over the middle, and it's intercepted by Blazewski. Inside the 30, inside the 20, Gluss will push him out of bounds. At the 16-yard line, a flag is down back up field. Fordham has forced their third turnover of the game. They did not cash in the fumble recovery. They had the blocked field goal. But they're going to have the ball here inside the Bucknell 20. The call holding against Bucknell. And it'll be a Fordham football again in golden field position. And the defense, again, will have to come up with some big plays to hold Fordham out of scoring again. Gentilly was the intended receiver on the play, and Gluss, I think, telegraphed that pass. Blazewski right into his hands, and a pretty good return for a linebacker. 
Must return that about 15 to 20 yards. First I interception believe. this season for Blazewski for Fordham. They have three turnovers in the game. They came in with 21, so they now have 24 in seven-plus games. First and 10 now for the Rams at a 16-yard line. Pullman will hand off to Ross. Ross will get maybe a yard to the 15 at best. Second down and nine coming up. Limpus and Lusk there to make the stop as Bucknell does a nice job in the middle of the field once again. And it looks like the defense has really come to play today, and the offense, I think they may be taking a little bit of a vacation because they have not come out and executed the way they should be. No gain on the last play. It'll be second and 10 from the 16. Garlic to the left side. To me to the right side. Ross, the lone back. Iacello and another player. Wing back, both power to the right side, which is the wide side. Now they'll bring Iacello back in motion to the left side. They'll toss it to Ross, left side. Ross will lose a yard as... Russ Strohecker and Ted Malin will slam him down in the backfield. Be a couple of yards lost on that play, and Fordham now at third and 12. Bucknell's defense once again keeping them in the ball game as the offense has uh, donated away three turnovers in the first half. And the defense, it's the second week in a row that they've found, the defense has found themselves, their backs against the wall, and that's due to poor offensive play. And luckily, Russ Strohecker's really come to play today. There's another big play on that last tackle. Third down and 12 now from the 18 of Bucknell. Pullman back to pass. Fordham leads at 7 nothing. Pullman slings it right side. Some jostling between Dwayne Hart and Tom Garlic. No flag incomplete. And Fordham will try yet another field goal as they'll bring the field goal team on. This time they're going to go with the other kicker. They are going to try Chris Savino, who is perfect this season. Four for four on extra points. Has never tried a field goal as Bob Hagan is yanked from that position. And they're going to put the ball down on the left hash mark at the 29, excuse me, the 24-yard line. So it'll be a 34-yard kick from Savino out of Potamus's hold. Snap is good. Hold is good. Savino's kick is going to be way short. It was a 34-yard kick that probably didn't even go 30 yards. So the interception re results in a missed field goal. And Fordham, uh, Kevin, has to be really disappointed in themselves because they have had the ball first on the Bucknell 27 and then on the 17, and they've gotten nothing out of it. Oh, two big turnovers, and they couldn't convert either one of them. They have to be feeling pretty bad about themselves. After the uh, musical field goal kicker game was played, they're 0 for 2, and uh, now Hardeveld's coming back into the game. Talking about musical field goal kickers, how about musical quarterbacks? Well, Hardeveld back in now. I was going to say, a Fordham player is shaken up on the field. We've got a break in the action with 9 minutes and 56 seconds to go. Fordham leads at 7 and nothing. We'll be back with more in 60 seconds. I'm calling Hunsberger for an order. Do you want anything? Uh, yeah, give me two Hunsbergers and a chocolate shake. But, uh, Wait, make that one Hunsberger, one cheeseburger, and a chocolate shake. Mr. Smithereens. Hang on a second. Johnson, we're calling Hunsberger. You want anything? Yeah, give me a Hunsberger, a luxe, small fries, and a cup of coffee. Mr. Smithereens, Hunsberger is an office supply company, not a restaurant. Not a restaurant? No, Hunsberger has business furniture and office supplies. You know, chairs, staplers, pens, pencils, desks, computer supplies, and support equipment. Hold on. Johnson Hunsberger is in the restaurant. It's an office supply company. Cancel the Hunsberger Deluxe Small Fries and Coffee and make that a stapler, two chairs, and a box of pen. And I'll take a pack of legal pads, a desk, and an appointment book. Okay. For business and office supplies, free installation and delivery, see Hunsberger Office Supply. Boy, I sure could have gone for a juicy charcoal broiled Hunsberger. Oh. That was a joke. You're supposed to laugh. Oh. Uh, 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 uh. laugh. Yes, sir. Hunsberger Office Supply, 2008 West 3rd Street. Williamsport, phone 326-7492. Fordham player that was shaken up is Lee Ciccarello, a 6'3", 260-pound senior reserve defensive tackle, has also played some nose guard when Fordham used a 3-4, and he's walking off very gingerly. Hopefully he will be able to return. One of the things that I think, Kevin, that makes sports so fun is that everybody has an opinion. It was our opinion that we thought they should have started Rob Gluss, but uh, that doesn't look like a very good decision because Gluss this afternoon was 0 for 1 with an interception and looked tentative. They've gone back to Peter Hardeveld, and as Kevin described it, musical quarterbacks being played this afternoon for Bucknell. First and 10. After the missed field goal, the ball will be placed on the 20. Hardeveld pumps once, throws it to the right flat. Garner makes a catch at the 23. Does a nice job of getting upfield to the 28. A gain of eight on the play. And Mike Wilt, the cornerback, makes a tackle with help from strong safety Chris Tyrone. Good throw by Hardeveld trying to get it between those D-backs that were covering on the play and uh, did a good job getting it to Garner. He hesitated 
momentarily for Garner to get open and uh, completed the pass. Glad you're with us on the Bison Sports Network. 9.28 to go in the second quarter. It's Fordham 7, Bucknell nothing. Bucknell's offense has turned the ball over seven times, excuse me, three times, but Fordham has only gotten seven points. Two missed field goals have kept Bucknell in the game. It's a toss to the short side, and that sideline tackler doesn't miss as uh, Clarkson and Wilt bump Walsh out of bounds for a loss on second and two back to the 27-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, so now it'll be a third down and about three coming up for Bucknell, and now they're going to give him forward progress, a generous spot for Bucknell up to the 29, so it'll be third down and about a yard and a half, nine minutes and 13 seconds to go in the half. Bucknell looking at a third down and short right here looking to try to convert. They'll go with double tight ends. Backs are in an eye. The lone wideout is Garner to the left side. Artevelt hands it to Walsh. Walsh will be very close to the 30-yard line, and it'll be key where the ball is spotted so and spotted. where they're spotting. It looks like it's beyond the 30, and that should be a first down. And they brought in number 73, Greg Gerdeman, 6'4", 332-pound sophomore. And they did get the first down. A good job blocking on that side, and Walsh had just enough to get that first down. From Van Cortland Park in New York, we've got the results of the Patriot League Cross Country Championships. Bucknell has won their 18th straight men's championship, scoring 30 points to Lehigh's 51. Lehigh comes in second. Bucknell's women finished third. They had 69. That was behind Lehigh's 39 and Fordham's 49. So congratulations to Art Goulden's men, yet another championship. Some jumping around in the offensive and defensive line, but no flags were down. It's a little delay to Fargo, the fullback, and he will be delayed in getting to the line of scrimmage. He'll be tackled back of the 30 at about the 28 or 29. He'll lose a couple, and uh, Bucknell now will be looking at a second down and 11 with 8.24 to go in the first half. It is 7 to nothing in favor of Fordham. Fordham scored on their first drive of the afternoon. Running has not been very swift for Bucknell. Wall, seven carries for nine yards. McElveen, three for 10. Vargo, two for two. Hardeveld two for negative six, and Gluss one for negative three. Hardeveld throws a pass out in the flat, nearly intercepted. John Clarkson had a drop at his feet, and Hardeveld, Kevin, was just trying to throw to get rid of it. Trying to get rid of it, and he may have been looking for Garner, but with three or four Fordham Rams in his face, he couldn't have seen where Garner was going. He lofted the ball up dangerously, and luckily John Clarkson, the linebacker, 5'11", 215-pound senior, didn't come down with that like Blazewski did on the drive before this last one. Bucknell, one of five this afternoon on third downs. They're staring at a third and 11 from their own 29. Berardinelli and Garner to the left side. The tight end is Gentili on the right side. Vargo in the slot. Walsh alone back. Three-man front this time for Fordham. Hardeville back to pass. He'll roll to the left side, step up in the pocket, and he'll be sacked. And Bucknell will lose five on the play. Back to the 26. Jason Frelick will have to punt it away. Dockerty on the tackle for uh, Fordham with help from Blazewski. And the Fordham defense does a nice job once again of forcing Bucknell into a fourth and long and having to have Frelick come in to punt. And, Bob, that was designed rollout. When a designed rollout crumbles before your eyes, you know that there's nobody blocking that well up front. And Frelick with a kick. It tumbles. It'll be fielded by Jordan on the 44. He'll slip at the 47. It'll be a return of three, a 32-yard kick for Freilich, and that's the second time today that Jordan has not been able to keep his feet on a punt return. He wouldn't have gotten much, but would have gotten more than that. And number 55, Gary Petras, was right there to make the play, and we've called his number quite a few times on punts. I'll tell you, he really does a good job. Other than the snap last week at Holy Cross, his snaps have been on the money all year, and he's very quick for a big guy. He's one of the first two or three down there every time on the tackle. He has been a, a very good special teams player this year for Bucknell. Rams again with excellent field position. First and 10 from their own 47. Pullman rolls, throws it left side. Iacello makes a catch at the Bucknell 48. Gets inside the 45 to the 44. It'll be a gain of nine on first down. So a second and one coming up for the Fordham Rams. We'll see if they'll call a conservative play here to get the first down or whether Larry Glick will be a little bit of a riverboat gambler and uh, maybe go deep figuring he'll have a third and short to come up if they don't get it. Yeah, the conservative style of the Fordham Rams offensive game plan has not worked at all. They've had some great field position. They've been stuffed every time when they've had good field position, especially on the last two turnovers that set up Fordham in good, you know, inside the 20. Second down and one. Halverson will carry. He may not get the full yard that he needed for the first down. He went over the right side. Zappa was there with help from Strohecker. The spot will be key. 
and they're going to call it short. It's going to be third down and less than a yard coming up for Fordham at the Bucknell 43 and a half yard line. Fordham going to bring a couple of extra tight ends. Another big wing back, and Adam Lang will come into the game. Potamusis and Garlic will leave. 6-17 to go and counting. 7-0 Fordham. We're in the second quarter. Fordham with double tight ends, double wing backs, and the lone back is Helverson. Pullman, though, will go on a quarterback sneak. He'll have the first down with plenty of room to spare. He'll gain two or three, maybe three close to the Bucknell 41. And I think the Bucknell defense may have been expecting the deep back Helverson to carry, but Pullman at good size, 6'1", 200 pounds, took it himself. And he got it easily by at least three yards, and he surged right over center, reserve center Brian McDonough and pick up the first down. Again, Fordham comes into this game with a 12-game losing streak, the longest in school history. They have yet ever to win a Patriot League game. They are 0-7 this season, but they are ahead here this afternoon. Bucknell with a four-man front. Iacello in motion from right to left. Pullman will roll to the right side, throw the pass on the run, making the catch is his tight end, Strauss, at the 35. They'll wrestle his way inside the 35 to the 33. It'll be a gain of eight on the first down pass. Second and two coming up, and a Bison is slow to get to his feet, and it may be Dan Zappa, one of the linebackers that is down for Bucknell. Yeah, I believe it is Dan Zappa who is down. It looks like he was sandwiched on that last tackle. He brought down Strauss. And it is Zappa that is down. Steve McHugh, who's only been playing linebacker for a couple of weeks, the former fullback, will come in and play it. And that's a position that uh, Bucknell can ill afford to lose someone, and ill afford certainly to lose someone as strong as Dan Zappa. Well, Zappa's up and walking, so that's a good sign. He may have... I think he'll be back in action a little later in the game. He's a tough guy to keep out of the ball game because he's so intense. And uh, he's running off the field now, so it's an excellent, excellent All right, sign. Let's get a pool going. How many plays before he's back? I'd like to have maybe two, maybe one. I'll say one. <laughs> Frank if you're, says if you're two. You're going to say two. I'll say one. We'll see. 5:29 to go in the half. Second down and two. Fordham now at the Bucknell 32-yard line. They need to get just inside the 31 for a first down. Backs in an eye for Fordham. Pullman, the quarterback, hands off to Helverson. Helverson has the first down inside the 30, moving the pile forward with his own leg strength. He'll get very close to the 25-yard line. Great, great leg strength for the uh, tailback, Scott Helverson, who's rushed for only 174 yards this year. He was a starter last year, but has been beat out this season by Chris Ross. But uh, he showed he could carry the mail on that play. And he did, and he picked up the first down. For a minute there, I thought I was watching a little Australian rules football, the way they were tugging back and forth. It looked like a, also a rugby match. And uh, I'm surprised Helverson picked up that much yardage. He was pushed by a surge of uh, Fordham players. It looked like one of the trainers was looking at Dan Zappa's neck, kind of moving it around a little bit. His helmet is back. It looks like he may come back after the next play. Helverson will run up the middle and run for a score. 20, 10, 5, touchdown Fordham. Little misdirection in the middle. Nobody was there for Bucknell. And Fordham will come up with their second touchdown of the game. And with 4.45 to go in the half, it is now 13 to nothing Rams. Wow, and he was, there was nobody there. Mark Miller was the last line of defense for Bucknell, and he couldn't make the play. It looked like Bucknell had some guys cheated up on the line. Jim Jaroshak, the strong safety, who probably would have been there, but he was close to the line of scrimmage, maybe on a blitz. And there was nobody home for Bucknell. Helverson in for the score. It is his second touchdown of the season. Savino will kick. He made the last extra point. Missed the last field goal, and Savino's extra point is up and good. He's now 5 for 5 on the season, and Fordham with 4.45 to go in the half is stunning Bucknell. It's the Rams 14, the Bison nothing, back in 60 seconds. You life together as man and wife. For all you feel, matching wedding rings from Wolf Jewelry in Lewisburg will be an everlasting symbol of that special feeling. Art Carved has been designing and creating wedding rings for over four generations of brides and grooms, and each quality Art Carved ring has been handcrafted with meticulous attention to detail. Come in together and let us show you our exquisite collection of Art Carved wedding rings. Now at Wolf's Jewelry, 314 Market Street, where we know how you feel and understand why only the best will do. I'm looking for a used car. Close out clearance sale at Valley Toyota. I'm looking for a new 4x2 or 4x4 truck. Close out clearance sale at Valley Toyota. I'm looking for a low mileage car with a future, not a past. Close out clearance sale at Valley Toyota. Don't miss the clearance sale. It could be your last. Mr. Announcer, don't you like clearance sales? I'm just doing my job. Moving cars and trucks out at Valley Toyota. Routes 11 and 15 Sealand Grove. 
Bobby Bob Beeler back here along with Kevin Baum on the Bison Sports Network. 4.45 to go in the half. It is 14 to nothing now in favor of the Fordham Rams. And they have been the more fired up football team, the hungrier team this afternoon. Bucknell has come out listless and flat and once again, they have spotted the opposition a very good lead in the first half. Hagen will kick off. High short kick. One of the up backs will field it. That's Steve Noteboom at the 22. Noteboom to the 25, to the 30, and that's it. It'll be a return of eight on the tackle for Fordham. Was uh, one of their special team players, Dwayne Rivera, a backup linebacker. And the Rams will start it. Excuse me, the Bison will start it just outside the 30 at the 31. You know, Bob, this Fordham team may be 0-7, but uh, these guys are hungry for victory, and Bucknell has to watch it here. They can't fall behind more than 14 points. And Fordham has had a lot more chances. They could have had six more points on a pair of missed field goals, and they lead it 14 to nothing. It could easily be 20 to nothing. First and 10, Bucknell from the 31. Handoff strip, middle to McElveen. A flag is down on the far side. McElveen tries to get to the outside, making the tackle be Jason Jacobs, a gain of a couple. We'll wait for the flag. Bucknell offensively has done zero today, and it has really hurt them. They have not been able to sustain any kind of an offensive drive. The defense has been out on the field quite a bit, and the turnovers on the offensive end haven't helped at all. It looks like Bucknell has about 16 carries this afternoon for a total of six yards rushing. They have not been able to move the football on the ground. Fordham's defense against the run is less than 100 yards a game. Bucknell will get a break. The McElveen uh, two-yard run will be wiped out because Fordham was off sides for the third time today. So Bucknell will take the penalty. They'll also take the down over and it'll be first and five now from the 36-yard line. First down and five. Fordham moving around again on defense. I don't think it brought any flags. McElveen will carry off right tackle. Nothing doing there. Geisler making the tackle. The first guy to get to him is Blazewski. And we've been handed a note that this is Fordham's biggest lead in 27 games. The last time they were ahead by more than uh, 13 points was uh, against CW Post when they won 26 to 13 on November 11th of 1989. Wow. So they are definitely enjoying this first half, leading 14 to nothing with 340 to go. Second down and six after the one yard loss to McElveen. Hardeveld looking over a four man front. Hardeveld will roll to the left side, stops, throws left side and throws it behind Vargo. It is incomplete. It'll now be third down and six. And Vargo was open in the flat. The ball just wasn't there. Vargo had the defensive back on the play, Chris Tyrone, beat in that flat area. But Hardeveld just couldn't complete the pass. And Hardeveld just looks a little off this week. Hardeveld two for eight for only 15 yards. Hardeveld has also uh, thrown one interception. Gluss has thrown one. Gluss threw his only pass for an interception. Hardeveld again last week. Went 11 for 22 for 50% completion for 176 yards in about a half of action. Third down now in six. McElveen the lone back, four-man front for Fordham. Hardeveld on a straight drop, throws it over the middle, and that one's dropped by Garner, and then right into the hands of Brian Vesey. 35, 30, 20, Hardeveld chasing, and a horse collar him at the 10-yard line. A 25-yard interception return for Brian Vesey down to the 10-yard line. Everything going Fordham's way here this afternoon. That one, though, was not the quarterback Hardeveld's fault. It was in Garner's hands, and Garner couldn't hold and just popped right in the air, and Vesey was the recipient. Fourth turnover of the game for Bucknell. And I think some of that had to do with Blazewski being in the area where Garner caught the pass. And once Garner saw Blazewski coming after him, the ball popped out. Of course, Vesey caught the ball and picked it off, and I'll tell you, Garner was laid out by Blazewski right after that ball was uh, mishandled. First and goal now at the Bucknell nine-yard line. Lone back is Helverson. He'll carry, get inside the 10, fighting his way to the five. This guy is a good straight ahead runner. He'll gain four to the five yard line. Second and goal at the five, 3.08 to go. And uh, the Bucknell Bison are gonna have to regroup here at the half. The offense has been non-existence. The defense has been asked to hunker down probably more than uh, can be legitimately expected. They turn it over on an interception at the 39. They turn it over on the 27. They turn it over on the 17. And now they turn it over on the 9. 
and it is only 14 to nothing and very easily could be 20 going on 27 if Fordham capitalizes here. Second down and goal at the five for the Rams. Pullman will toss to Helverson. Helverson will go outside. Helverson will get back to the five before Jim Jaroshak will knock him down. Helverson looks a little bit more tentative going to the outside, Kevin. Kind of looked like he was walking on eggshells. He'll lose a yard back to the six, so now it'll be third and goal at the six with 2.20 to go in the half. Good pursuit by the Bucknell defense, and they're going to have to do it again. They're going to have to really bear down and try to stop the scoring opportunity for Fordham, and hopefully they can force him just to a field goal. And that might be good because Fordham is 0 for 2 on field goals today, 2 for 10 on the season. Third down and goal at the 6. Pullman has one back. That's Helverson. Pullman will roll to the right side. Looking, looking, running out of room. And now he'll be sacked by John Lusk back at the 11-yard line. It'll be a loss of 5. And Fordham is going to have to try another field goal. Or one at least would think they would try another field goal. And Fordham's going to spend a timeout. We'll take it with them. 140 to go in the half, 14 to nothing Fordham, back with a fourth down play in 60 seconds. Well, Fordham has made their decision after using their first time out. They're going to go for the field goal, their third field goal try of the game. This will be the closest of three attempts. They're going to go with Chris Savino, who's two for two today on field goal, excuse me, on extra points, 0 for 1 on field goals. It's from the right hash. It'll be a 29-yard kick. Potamusas to hold, trying to give Fordham a 17 to nothing lead. Nice snap, nice hold. Savino's kick is blocked. The ball is loose on the ground. It is going to be picked up by Bucknell at the 20-yard line. That is two blocked field goals on the day and a missed field goal. The special team kick blocking group, uh, Kevin, is keeping Bucknell in this game. Not only is the kick blocking group keeping them in the game, also the Bucknell defense credit. Dwayne Hart on that last sack by John Lusk. Pullman was rolling to the right, looking for garlic in the corner of the end zone. And I'll tell you, Hart has covered garlic like a blanket today because he hasn't had too many receptions. I think he's had one in the afternoon in the Bucknell secondary really stepping it up and that is allowing for Bucknell's defensive line to assert themselves. Patriot League scores Holy Cross 21, Lehigh 7 in the second quarter. Colgate leads Lafayette 14 to 10. That game midway through the second quarter in the ugly game of the week. Army leads Eastern Michigan 5 to nothing. That game's in the first quarter. Hardeville being pressured. Flag is down. Throws it into the Fordham bench. Incomplete. And I think the flag may be a hold in back of the play going against Bucknell. If that's the case, Fordham will have to decide whether they want the down or whether they want the yardage. That is the uh, penalty. Minute 23 to go in the uh, first half. 14 to nothing in favor of Fordham. And I'll tell you, the, the quarterbacks, last I was talking to Travis Kopp this week, uh, uh, Kevin, and he said it's much harder when you know that you're going to start and you're going to come in and play. And uh, the uh, quarterbacks, uh, both Gluss and, and Hardeveld, have looked rattled back there today. They really have, and it's too bad because I think Travis Kopp was in there right now. I think this game would be a lot different, uh, especially for Bucknell's offensive unit. It's tough when you lose your signal caller, the main man, like Travis Kopp, who's having an excellent season, then all of a sudden you're stuck with a backup and then a freshman who has pretty much no experience, and it's really showing through today. First down and six, uh, excuse me, first down back at the six. It's first and 24. Hand off to Walsh. Walsh will get to the five, so he'll lose another yard. It'll now be second down and 25 coming up. Fordham may want to think about spending some timeouts on defense and maybe force Bucknell into a punt out of their own end zone. Bucknell pinned deep in their own territory on the four yard line, and it just hasn't gone their way today offensively. I want to remind you that you're listening to the Bison Sports Network, WTGC Lewisburg, 
and WFXX South Williamsport. Fordham has called a timeout. We'll keep it here on this break to stop the clock. They have one timeout remaining, 1.16 to go, and the Fordham Rams leading at 14 to nothing, and that is in spite of the fact that they've had three field goals blocked, or three field goals missed, two were blocked. I'll tell you, Bob, Bucknell is very fortunate to be down only 14 to nothing. Fordham has had numerous opportunities to put some points up on the board, and they just haven't been able to do it. And that could be one of the reasons why they're 0-7. They have yet to win a game because they just do not cash in. And, Bob, another thing, I don't think I've seen Bucknell's defense, or offense, excuse me, offense play so bad as they are today. I mean, they are playing just terrible, and uh, they just can't seem to get anything going. Second down now and 25 back at the 5. Berardinelli to the left, Garner to the right. Walsh the only back. Fargo up on a wing left side. The tight end is Zayats. He's on the right side. Hardevelt staring at a second down and 25. Hands it to Walsh. Walsh will be tackled in the backfield again for another loss. Back to the two. It was linebacker John Clarkson that shot in. And Fordham is going to use their last timeout of the half. And we'll take it with them. 109 to go in the half. 14-0 Fordham. Back in 60 seconds. the way your parents were treated when they were looking to buy a vehicle when they were your age. Then come into Anchor Oldsmobile Pontiac GMC and see the friendly salespeople. We carry a large inventory of new Oldsmobiles, Pontiacs, and GMC trucks. We also have one of the finest used car selections in the three-county area. Come in and see us at Anchor Oldsmobile Pontiac GMC on Route 15 in Lewisburg. The right car at the right price. If you're 55 or over, enjoy all the benefits of West Milton State Bank Senior Bankers Club. They've combined the services you want with the travel you dream about. Find out more during the Senior Bankers Club open house now through November 7th. Enjoy free refreshments and ask about free checking, social events, day trips, and travel tours. Attend the Senior Bankers Club open house going on now through November 7th at the best bank in your neighborhood. West Milton State Bank in West Milton and Lewisburg. Member FDIC. Bucknell now looking at a third down and 28 back on about the two and a half yard line. Garner to the right, Berardinelli to the left. The lone back is Vargo. Fordham with about a five man front. They're going to send some players to the middle of the field and Bucknell going to play it safe. They're going to hammer Walsh the running back into the line. He'll gain maybe a yard to the three or to the four. Down under a minute to go. Bucknell will have to kick the football and we'll see if Fordham is going to play for the block or whether they're going to play for the return. As difficult as it's been to make a field goal, Kevin, I think I might go for the block here and try to either get a safety or maybe recover the ball in the end zone and then just instruct your safety, Brad Jordan, who's standing at the 35, to fair catch it or take as much as he can get on the return. Freilich will only have about 10 yards on the snap, so that is about three or four yards less than he normally would like to work with. Petros with the snap, rush comes, Freilich gets it away. Jordan will field it on the 33. It's a 30-yard kick. Jordan inside the 30 down to the 25 yard line Fordham will get it there the clock will stop on change of possession with 18 seconds to go time for a couple of plays and maybe a field goal Kevin they have no timeouts remaining in the half and again Fordham finds themselves in great field position whether or not they can cash in we'll have to wait and see but if uh, if history repeats itself as did earlier today I don't think Fordham's gonna put any more points up on the board their offense I don't think has been has been about as good as Bucknell's. This could be the fourth time today in the first half that they will have started a drive at Bucknell's 30 or better and not gotten points. They have 18 seconds to work with, no tight end, no timeouts, two receivers to the right, one to the left, no tight ends. Pullman throws over the middle, making the catch is Iacello at the 18-yard line. They're going to have to get up to the line and kill the clock. It's down to eight seconds to go. My apologies, it was Strauss and not Iacello on that last catch. Pullman is going to kill it with two seconds to go, and they're going to stop the clock with one second, and Fordham is going to have a chance either to throw the ball for the end zone or to bring the field goal team on. And the officials now will huddle, and I think Fordham is going to be allowed to have their one second. Bob Hagen would be the kicker this time as Fordham continues to play musical kickers for field goal try. Yeah, they're going to call a legal procedure against Fordham, and if it's like the pros, they might run the clock, and the half might be over because they committed a penalty in the last few seconds without a timeout. And the Bucknell fans want them to turn the clock, and they'll turn it, and that's it. So Fordham will not get a chance to get their field goal off, and that's the right call. 
again, when you are the offensive team and you commit a penalty in the last few seconds of the half, they'll start the clock again immediately. And Fordham is standing around in dis disbelief, not liking the call, but uh, they said the procedure call came before the spiking of the ball and uh, Larry Glick out talking to the officials to no avail and Bucknell dodges another bullet. Oh, another. to 10 and Syracuse big over pit 34 to 3 North Carolina at the end of the first quarter leads the Maryland Terrapins 7 to nothing and of course Maryland with former Holy Cross head coach Mark Duffner it'll be Fordham getting the break to receive the opening kickoff of the second half because remember they deferred at the beginning of the game and Bucknell decided to take the football first so the Rams will will be in possession of the ball first and they'll have a chance to put out their offense on the field again the Pullman the quarterback decent five of eight for 47 yards Bucknell combined was two for ten they completed more passes to the opposition three than they completed their own selves which was two so uh, offensively Bucknell has uh, has really stunk up the joint here in the first half and uh, again as we were talking on the break very fortunate to be down 14 to nothing very fortunate we t we figured it out i think it was 26 to nothing the score should be fordham did not cash in when they could have especially in the field goal category and remember the pregame we talked about the kicking woes i'll tell you fordham's kicking woes make bucknell's kicking woes look non-existent let me tell you because they have looked terrible at least bucknell can get the ball off on a kick you know there's three field goal attempts that were blocked so that is just uh, incredible. Bucknell this afternoon at the half officially has zero yards rushing, 20 carries for zero yards. Frank Thompson, the little more generous one in the official stats, had him for four yards. Frick will kick off, high end over end kick. Garlic will field on the 13, come across the 15 to the 20, to the 25, out to about the 29. The ball may have popped loose. Bucknell seems to think that they have the football. And let's see what the officials are going to rule and I think they're going to say that it is Fordham football at the 29-yard line, first and 10, but the Bucknell special team's trying to paw at that football and knock it out. Good kickoff coverage by the Bison, and they really nailed Garlic on that play. That's why it didn't surprise me at all that the ball may have come loose. But Garlic, with those good hands, maintained possession of the ball. Opening moments of quarter number three, it's Fordham leading by the count of 14 to nothing. Pullman remains at quarterback. Iacello and Ross, who've gone almost the entire way in the backfield, and Ross will be greeted by Cecil Boone at the 25-yard line. It'll be a loss of five. It looked to me like Cecil Boone was shot out of a cannon. He hit Ross that hard oh, in the backfield. Big league hit. I think he was untouched. Burst into the backfield, and uh, what a play. That's the type of plays that Bucknell is going to have to make to fire this team up. And the defense, it seems like week after week, especially starting with the Columbia game three weeks ago, the defense is starting to really set the tone for this team. Garlic to the left side, Potamusas to the right. The tight end is Strauss. He was the leading receiver in the first half for Ford, and he's on the right side. Potamusas and Garlic have been quiet, and Pullman will throw a pass behind Garlic. Good coverage by freshman Mark Miller. Dan Zappa was also there if Garlic had been able to catch the ball. And the Bucknell defense, Kevin, has done a nice job clamping down on uh, both of those uh, Fordham receivers. Potamusas, one catch for 22 yards. That was on the first drive of the game. And it was and, a missed uh, tackle. And Garlic has not caught a ball all day. Good job by the secondary. Miller doing a fine job. Dwayne Hart, of course, in that closing drive of the, uh, or one of the closing drives in the second quarter, did a nice job in the corner of the end zone to force a field goal attempt. So, yeah, secondary for Bucknell really stepping up against these high touted receivers. Third and 14 for Fordham. Three receivers to the right side. Pullman will go on a quarterback draw, and it will get about nothing. Maybe a couple of yards. A flag is down. Maybe some late hits being called against Bucknell. The Bucknell defensive line on that side, Lusk and Boone were there to react quickly. Pullman gained a couple on the play, and it appears that Bucknell is going to be penalized for a late hit, and that should give Fordham enough on a 15-yard penalty for a first down, and that is going to be a huge gift by the Bucknell defense to Fordham. Very questionable call. I think Pullman was held up. A lot of guys took some shots, but I don't think anybody blatantly came in and laid a late hit on Pullman, but the officials saw it differently. And, and it was uh, called right in front of the Bucknell bench. You usually don't get one of those calls in front of your own bench at home. 13 minutes and 59 seconds to go in the third quarter. 14 to nothing in favor of Fordham. 
Fordham trying to hone in on their first Patriot League win ever. Garlic and Potamousis wide to the right side. Baxson and I. Bucknell with four down line and five other players jammed near the line. Pullman will roll to the right side. Pullman being pressured. Pullman throws as he hits it, intending it for Iacello. Incomplete. They will not call grounding. Lusk and Jeroshak and a couple of others were there, and Pullman a couple times a day, Kevin, has just gotten rid of the ball in time. Just in time there because Lusk had him in his grasp and a good job at the Bucknell defensive line, getting good penetration, forcing Pullman out of the pocket. And uh, I don't think that was a design role. I think Pullman was just dropping back in the pocket, was going to throw it out in the flat, and he couldn't with Lusk right in his face. Potamousis and Garlic both wide to the right. Iacello on a wing right side. The lone back appears to be Helverson now in for Ross, or maybe that's Ross. They both have a seven for their second number, and it is Ross. Ross will carry up the middle, busts a couple of tackles, gets out to about the 45. It'll be a pickup of two, and Fordham now will be looking at a third and seven or eight to go for a first down. They'll spot him officially to the 46, so it'll be third and seven coming up for the Rams, leading at 14 to nothing. Harris coming back into the game with reserve tight end uh, Corey Harper. Uh, Ross at running back will come out along with the tight end uh, Strauss, so going with more of the wide open uh, set for the Fordham Rams. Potamousis to the right, Garlic to the left along with Harris. They're both on the short side. Iacello, the lone back behind Pullman, 4-3 defensively. Now check it, it's a nickel in there now for Bucknell. Pullman on a straight drop, has some time. Now throws over the middle and Strohecker almost intercepts it. He reacted to the ball and knocked it away from Iacello and almost came up with another interception. And down injured is one of the offensive linemen for Fordham. That is right tackle Tim Sullivan. And Fordham already lost a defensive lineman in Lee Ciccarello earlier in the ball game. So the Bucknell defense, despite giving up a penalty for a first down, does a nice job of clamping down and forcing a punt on the initial drive of the second half. They're trying to swing that momentum back to the offensive unit. Hopefully it'll work. Tim Sullivan gone down right now for the Fordham Rams, and that's one position that they've been decimated with with injury. Uh, starting center, like we said in the beginning of the game, Pentonen is gone, the starting center. Mike Byer is starting guard, also injured for the year. And I think Coach Glick has got to be really shaking his head now, seeing another starting lineman down you know, by the wayside. You know, I think the key when you're looking at injuries for a Fordham, for a Bucknell, for a Lehigh, or for anybody at this level, with no scholarships, you have very little depth. The top people are your top people. And then you, you have to hopefully bring along your backups, and it's tough to expect non-blue chip freshmen and sophomores to step in. And then if your backups go down, you're even in worse shape than you were before because then, like Bucknell is, they're pulling a good reserve fullback in Steve McHugh, pulling him to linebacker. You're taking him out of position to shore up a position where you're really depleted. Fordham will punt on fourth and seven from their own 46. Bernardini and Wall standing just inside of Bucknell's 20. Mazzanigro will punt. Nice snap. Bucknell with a big rush. I think they're going to get one before the day is over. Wall will also field the short kick on the 30. Fly across the 35 to the 37. On the tackle that time for Fordham was Maurice O'Shea, the first man to get to him. And Bucknell will start at first and 10 in good field position at their own 37. They have been oh so close, Kevin, this afternoon to blocking a punt. <laughs> very, very close. And like you said, I think they are going to block him before the day's out. Jeff Wall came inches away from blocking that punt. Hardevel will remain the quarterback. Vargo and Walsh in an offset eye. Berardinelli to the left, Garner to the right. The tight end is Zayats on the right side. Long count for Hardeveld, give it off, left side to Walsh. Walsh with his biggest run of the day across the 40, plows to the 45, he'll get eight. Second and two coming up, and that was good blocking on the left side by Don Watson at left tackle, and the left guard, Craig Knauer, eight yards on the play. Bucknell now has eight yards rushing on the game, and it's second down and two coming up, and again, maybe the offense has found themselves in the second half. We certainly can't tell that after one play. Walsh has doubled his rushing total. He now has 11 uh, carries for uh, 15 yards this afternoon. Second down and two. Walsh will get it again, this time off the right side, and this time he may get a yard to the 46. Bucknell will be looking at a third down and one. On the tackle is uh, Clarkson for, uh, for Fordham. Jeff Rupp also there for the Rams. Fargo threw a nice block on Clarkson, but Chris Tyrone closed the gap and uh, enabled Tyrone to make the play. Down to 11.50 to go in the third quarter. 14 for Fordham, nothing for Bucknell. Fordham had four Bucknell turnovers that they forced in the first half. Three interceptions and a fumble recovery. Third down and a yard and a half. Bucknell and an eye. 
Hardevelt, play fakes to Walsh, rolls to the right side, throws the little waggle pattern in the flat, throws it behind Vargo, it's incomplete. It'll now be fourth down in a yard and a half. Vargo was wide open, and the only player he had to contend with on that play was Brad Jordan. The, the free safety that tried to come up and make the play. Vargo was all alone. Just a lack of execution, Bob. Tyrone and Jordan back to return the punt. Tyrone standing at the 31. Jordan standing at the 20. Bucknell with a fourth down and a yard and a half. Freilich on to punt. Bucknell had good field position. Couldn't get anything with it. And Freilich with his best punt of the day. A high spiraling kick taken by Jordan on the 6. Comes across the 10 to the 15 to the 16. It'll be a return of 10 for Jordan. 47 yards. For Jason Freilich, that is his longest of the season, and that was just a picture-perfect kick. Had a lot of height and a lot of yardage, and it enabled the Bucknell defenders to get down there and make the play. Frost initially slowed him up, which led to Jordan's demise on the return. Will take over. First and 10 at their own 16-yard line. And that was a big play, though, that Hardeveld waggle pass. I think if, if Hardeveld can just get a first down, just get a little bit of confidence, I think he can get right back to where he left off against Holy Cross, but it just has not happened yet today. First and 10 now for the Rams from their own 16. Pullman hands off to Ross. Ross may get a couple out to the 18. The ball pops loose, but it was after the play was blown dead. We'll call it a gain of two for Ross. Second and eight coming up. Ross on the day has been their uh, top ball carrier. 17 carries for 61 yards. He is averaging 42 yards a game this season. He has played in all seven, started now four, counting this one here today. So he's doing a little better than normally. Potamusas to the right, Harris to the left, Helverson in the slot to the left. The lone back is Iacello, four-man front for Bucknell. Second and eight now from the 18. Pullman back to pass. Browser will sack him all alone with Sean Browser, who came in with the sack. Browser now with two sacks on the season, and Fordham loses about nine yards on the play. It'll now be a third down and seven coming up for the Rams, all the way back at their 10. And Browser picking up right where he left off against Holy Cross, a very strong effort in a reserve role at defensive tackle last week. Now he's at his more customary defensive end position, and he shot right in there to make the play. Pullman was nailed, and now Fordham is really pinned deep in their own territory. Browser, Boone, Kilpalainen, and Lusk make up the uh, down line. Strohecker and Zappa, the linebackers, the nickel secondary in there now on third and long. Quick hitter up the middle, Iacello 10, 15, 20, 25, has the first down to the 30-yard line. Bucknell's defense gets caught napping, and on a third down and about 16 or 17, Iacello, the fullback on the quick hitter with his longest game of the day, 22 yards, and that's not the kind of play you want to give up on third and long. Not at all. Bucknell was in his zone defense on that play, and they were indeed caught napping. And it looked like uh, kind of an option play. They handed the ball to the middle back. Pullman carried out the play like he was going to make an, you know, a, a toss. And, gee, what can you say? A, too much yardage to give up on that kind of a play up the middle. First and 10 now at the 31 after the 22-yard gain. Carrying is Helverson. Helverson may get a yard. Second and nine coming up. Shane Limpus had come in on the last play for Cecil Boone. Now Ted Malin is coming in. And let's see who will get the breather. They're going to bring out John Lusk, so Bucknell trying to get some fresh defensive linemen in there. You know, that play also hurts Bucknell because if you pin Fordham deep in their own territory, you're more apt to get better field position. Bucknell has not enjoyed any kind of field position during the, this game. Yeah, and also Musa Negro has had trouble getting punts off. Bucknell has nearly blocked a couple, so again, uh, they would have had Fordham punting out of the end zone. Second down and eight. Pullman the quarterback, Ross the lone back. Long count. Pullman, handoff to Ross, straight up the middle. That may be a yard if he's lucky, and Fordham will be looking. We'll call it a third and seven from their own 33. Tackle by Russ Stroheck. If you're just joining us, 14 to nothing, Fordham leading. Bucknell had four turnovers, three interceptions, and a fumble in the first half. They had zero yards rushing in the first half. Fordham missed three field goals. Two of them were blocked, and uh, again, it should be a Fordham route at this point, but... Uh, Bucknell's defense and special teams have allowed them to hang in there, down 14 to nothing. Third down and seven now for the Rams from their own 34-yard line. They need to get to the 41 for the first down. 
Pullman, play fakes to Ross, tossing it to Garlic on the reverse. Garlic cuts up field, 35, 40. He'll be very close to the first down at the 41. Mark Miller and Todd Jessup made the tackle. It almost looked like a busted play, Kevin. I thought Garlic was going to try to go to the sidelines, but all of a sudden cut it up field in the middle of the field, and that play is going to be worth at least six and possibly seven, and I think they are going to be inches short of the first down, although they're going to bring the sticks out and measure. And Garlic did a good job of maneuvering his way through the Bucknell defense on that play. And he may have gotten the first down. We'll have to see. And he did get the first down. Credit Garlic with seven yards on the reverse. And with less than eight minutes to go in the third quarter, Fordham moves the sticks again for another first down. That is ten first downs for Fordham on the year. They are only averaging 13 a game in the first down category. You know, Bob, Bucknell really defensed that play very well. You have to give a lot of credit to Garlic. He got all those yards on his own. He had to weave and work his way through that Bucknell defense and evade a lot of tacklers and uh, give a lot of credit to Garlic on that play. Potamusas to the right side, Garlic to the left side. A lone back is Ross, four-man front for Bucknell. They now have three linebackers back in. First and ten Rams, Pullman being pressured, throws it out on the flat, and Iosello will drop it at the 44. Dan Zappa was right there step for step, and Iosello may have heard the uh, feet of Dan Zappa coming up from behind him. Instead of a four- or five-yard gain, it's incomplete, and it's second and ten now, Fordham from their own 41. You know, Bucknell has to really watch because they. it seems like every time Fordham has a third and long, Bucknell keeps letting them off the hook. And that's the second time in a row that Bucknell has really let getting the ball back slip through their fingers. Again, Bucknell's defense this season has allowed first downs on 47% of the third downs. That's pretty high. Fordham's offense has only converted it three out of ten times on the season in average as they are 30%. Second and ten now for the Rams from their own 41. Pullman setting up a screen, throws it in the middle, and it's nearly intercepted by Shane Limpus. Great pressure by John Lusk. Pullman was just throwing to Iacello to get rid of it, and Olympus cut in front of him and couldn't quite reach the ball. It was a near interception inside the 40 of Fordham. Great job by John Lusk pursuing Pullman. Hit his arms up the whole way. That's what you have to do. You have to shield the quarterback's vision, and that allowed the pass to almost get picked off by Olympus. Third down now and 10. Fordham has converted two third downs on this drive. Fordham having some indecision is... They're bringing a couple of extra players on here as the 30-second clock running down, or the 25-second clock running down to seven. They'll send three wide receivers to the left side. Four-man front for Bucknell. Carrying it straight up the middle is Iacello. He's got another first down on the same kind of play that we saw the 22-yard run a moment ago. He gets it into Bucknell territory at the 45-yard line. It is just a quick hitter. 13 yards on that play, and Fordham goes to the well for the same play once again. And unfortunately for Bucknell, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Oh, another huge gainer, Bob. It's nothing fancy, just a quick hit play up the middle. And it's the second time the Bison have been burned, and they've been burned big. Fordham now with a first and 10 on the 45. If they are able to take this one in and score, they will have gone 84 yards for the score. It'd be an impressive drive. Ross will carry over the 45 to the 43-yard line. Gain of a couple, second and eight coming up. 6.45 and counting to go in the third quarter. Fordham 14 and Bucknell nothing. Bucknell's offense has sputtered with the injury to Travis Kopp. Neither Rob Gluss, the backup, or Peter Hardeveld, the starter today, have been able to muster anything as quarterback. Second down and eight and a half to go for a Fordham first down. Garlic, who has not caught a pass, and Potamusis will go to the left side. Tight end Strauss on the right side. The lone back is Ross. Ross will carry straight up the middle. Inside the 40, getting to about the 38. Ed Jackson will stand him up there with help from uh, Russ Strohacker. It'll be a pickup of five. And Fordham now will be looking at a third down and about two or three to go for a first down. And early in the game, Kevin, Fordham had trouble running up the middle, but midway through the first half and certainly in the third quarter, they have found a soft spot right up the middle. Soft spot. Indeed, they have found, especially on the two plays six. that got them the big gainers to two. save, you know, drive salvaging runs. And then right there, Helverson with a nice run. Fordham may be in the four down territory right here with a third down and two at the Bucknell 38. They'll go with the straight T and double tight ends. Old Vince Lombardi kind of football. Pullman to the right half back. That's Ross. Ross going over the left side. He will not get the first down. He'll get maybe to the 36 or 36 and a half yard line. And now Fordham is going to bring the punt team on and kick the ball, or at least apparently kick the ball, on fourth down 
and about, well, it looks more than a yard and a half. They're not going to even say that he got inside the 37, so it's fourth and two. They're going to bring Muzan Negro on to punt. Walsh and Bernardini standing at the 10. Might be a time to consider a fake as the ball is inside the Bucknell 40. But I would think ahead 14 to nothing, Fordham would like to pin Bucknell's offense down inside their own end. Nice snap, virtually no rush for Bucknell, and Muzan Negro's kick will bounce at the seven and go inside the five, and VC will down it at the two. It will be a 35-yard kick that time for Muzan Negro, just perfectly placed, and VZ was down there to down it, and Larry Glick and the Fordham Rams come up smelling like a rose with Bucknell having to start on their own two. It'd be crazy not to punt in that situation or you're winning 14 to zip. It's your biggest lead since 1989. Bucknell's offense has not done a thing all day. I mean, you just have to punt in that play, and uh, Glick has to be very pleased with that last punt. I mean, Bucknell's pinned very deep in their own end. Back Bucknell now going with an eye. Vargo in front of McElveen. Double tight ends. Eric Klingner, the lone wide out to the left side. McElveen will try the left side. He may get to the three. Kevin Chris McElveen. Tyrone, the strong safety, finishes him off with the tackle. Good surge on the right side of the uh, defense for Fordham. Once again, uh, defensive tackle Kurt Geisler, who has started all seven games in there along with Tyrone. Down to 425 to go in the... Third quarter, 14 to nothing in favor of Fordham. Bucknell with a second down and nine after McElveen's one yard gain. Again, double tight ends. Klingner, the lone wide out. He goes to the right side. The back's in an eye. Now McElveen will come in motion to the right side to be another receiver. Hardeveld will pass out of the end zone. Being chased. Hardeveld will float it up and throw it over the head of McElveen. And he was looking just to get rid of that one. Incomplete. He was being pressured by O'Doherty, a defensive tackle. And Jason Jacobs. A linebacker who was blitzing on the play. And uh, Bucknell now will have a third and nine coming from their own three. And they need a few yards just to give uh, Jason Freilich his complimentary 13 yards. He needs to punt. Berardinelli to the left. Klingner to the right. Berardinelli this afternoon has been shut out on catches. He has no catches this afternoon. Although Bucknell with only... A precious few that have been completed. Hardeveld back to pass, looking for Whitey and throws it over Whitey's head. And Hardeveld really telegraphed the whole time. He didn't even look off Whitey. As soon as he backpelled, he was looking on the left side and incomplete. And Fordham now is going to show that that punt that was down at the two may pay big dividends for them because Freilich is going to have to punt from his own end zone with a very, very short snap. And the last time that he punted out of his end zone, Fordham had the ball at the 30-yard line after a pretty decent return by Brad Jordan. We'll see what kind of field position Jordan can get the Rams. Fordham will rush 10. Jordan will stand at the Bucknell 46. Fourth down and nine. Freilich bobbles the snap, and the kick is nearly blocked. Jordan will field it on the run at the 36, come across the 30 to the 25. It'll be an 11-yard return for Jordan, 33-yard kick for Freilich. Freilich, when I mean bobbled, it kind of tried to adjust it in his hands, and almost had it blocked by Brian Vesey who was charging in for Fordham. The Rams will start at first and 10 at the Bucknell 25. If you're wondering, this afternoon, Bucknell quarterbacks a combined two for 13. And it's uncharacteristic of the way Bucknell has been throwing the ball this season. Travis Kopp having a dynamite year, but of course he's gone for the year now. And somebody's gonna have to really step it up. And right so far today, Gloss and Hardeveld have not done the job. Three minutes, 42 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's 14 to nothing, Fordham. And this may be, you don't want to be over dramatic, Kevin, but this may be the drive of the game. If Fordham could stick it in here for a touchdown and go ahead 21 to nothing starting the fourth quarter, the way Bucknell's offenses move the ball, it may be insurmountable. Pullman has him in an eye. Pullman to Ross. Ross around right tackle. Standing him up is Zappa and finishing him off is Jeroshak. Gain of one, maybe two on the play. And it's second and eight coming up for the Rams at the Bucknell 23. And the Bison secondary very active today, making a lot of play. They've been forced to make a lot of tackles. And there it is again, Jeroshek. Good job by Zappa, though, getting out in the flat and making that play. That's what you want to do. If you can't bring him down, you at least want to not allow them to drag you and then let your teammates help finish him off, and that's exactly what occurred. Garlic to the right side, Potamusas to the left. Ross, the lone back behind Pullman. Four-man front for Bucknell. They've got three linebackers. Quick hitter to Ross. Ross inside the 20, inside the 15, down to the 11. It'll be a first down for Fordham. Gain of about 13 or so on the play to Ross. And it'll be first and 10 Rams now at the Bucknell 11-yard line. Again, a running play up the middle. 
It's been a very, very soft spot in that Bucknell defense. Rams again trying to break a school record 12 game losing streak. They are 0 7 on the campaign, but leading here 14 to nothing with 2.44 to go in the third quarter and knocking on the door with a first down and 10 at the 11. Pullman to Iacello, straight up the middle. Iacello will get maybe to the eight. We'll call it a gain of three, second and seven. Zappa again on the tackle for Bucknell with help again from Jeroshak. And Bob, I wonder if, if Fordham's put in a situation to kick a field goal or go for the score. You have to wonder what Glick is gonna go for. I'd say the score, the way his kicking game has gone. I think a lot will depend on what the down, just, I mean, the distance situation would be, but you're right, if he looks at a fourth and one or two, the way they've been able to run the ball up the middle, it would probably be a higher percentage play, but right now they're looking at a second down and seven from the eight. Pullman, the lone back is Ross. Wing back, right side is Iacello. They'll run Ross straight up the middle. Ross may get a yard to the seven, and now it'll be third down, and we'll call it six at the seven. Browser on the Sean Browser made the stop for Bucknell. Big play here for Fordham offensively. I don't think you could go for it here. I think you'd have to take your chances with the field goal on third down and six, but uh, the ball is at the seven. Minute 31 and counting to go in the third quarter. Garlic to the right, Potamusis to the left, Iacello in the slot to the right, the lone back is Ross. Pullman, the sophomore quarterback, has gone all the way for Fordham. He will roll to the right side, dumping it out in the flat, making the catch the five is Iacello. He will get close to the goal line. He'll be stopped at the one, I think, Kevin. It'll be good enough for a first down. Could be. Todd Jessup made a nice hit on Iacello, but I think you're right. I think it may give them enough yardage for that first down. They have turned the down stick over to one, so it is a first down for Fordham. Quickly, some scores of other games. Lafayette leading Colgate with four minutes to go in the third, 20 to 14. And Holy Cross leads Lehigh 28 to 17 with 13 minutes to go in the third. We've got a timeout defensively called by Bucknell. We'll take it with him. 57 seconds to go in the third quarter. Fordham 14, Bucknell nothing back in 60 seconds. Truck that you are looking for. Whether you want a sporty Geo or rock solid work truck, Car Ohega has it. Because it's the largest volume Chevy dealer in five counties, Car Ohega has the greatest selection. Looking for a luxury van, Corvette, or family wagon? No problem. Car Ohega can put you behind the wheel of the vehicle that best suits your needs. And once you're the proud owner of a new Chevy car or truck, Car Ohega's number one service department will help you keep it running for miles and miles. Car Ohega Chevrolet, 1200 Front Street, Milton. Citizens Electric, servicing the Buffalo Valley since 1911, is proud to sponsor Bucknell Bison football. Electricity provides a safe, clean, and efficient source of energy for home heating and cooling. Over 90% of the new homes in Citizen Service area use electricity for heating and cooling. Most install state-of-the-art heat pump technology. That many of your friends and neighbors can't be wrong. So if you have a choice, choose wisely. Choose electricity for safety, comfort, and efficiency. This message has been brought to you by Citizens Electric Company in Lewis. Fordham with a first and goal on the one, leading at 14 to nothing. Pullman has one back behind him, that's Ross. Pullman goes with a quarterback sneak. He's trying to go over his left guard, Tom Wickersham, but I don't think he'll make it. He'll get about a half yard on the play. It'll be second down and goal from there. And Bucknell stiffing it up a little bit up front, and they're going to have to. Their backs are really against the wall now. And Bob, like you said, a touchdown here really could seem to put the game out of reach because Bucknell's offense just is not doing the job and they have not shown any signs of mounting any kind of a drive. 29 seconds to go in the third quarter. Same formation, double wing back, double tight ends. The lone back is Ross Pullman, the quarterback. Pullman on another quarterback sneak. This time I think he's in for the score and the officials put the hands up and Fordham now with 17 seconds to go in the quarter on a one yard run by the quarterback. Pullman leads it 20 to nothing. Two one-yard runs today, and really that touchdown set up by the punt that was able to be downed at the two-yard line by the Fordham Rams. And of course, in the last punt by Freilich, Jordan did a great job of coming down with the ball and made a great return, at least 10 to 15 yards. So throw that in there, and that equals a touchdown. Savino on for the extra point. He is two for two this afternoon, five for five on the season. The walk-on seniors kick is up, it is good. We've got another break in the action. 17 seconds to go in the third quarter. It is Fordham 21, Bucknell nothing. Back after this. 
Pittsburgh. This fall, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are special at the Town Tavern. Tuesday's Wing Ding Night, where you can eat a dozen wings for a dollar. And Wednesday is Bucknell Night with live bands. Come get a bite to eat from the Town Tavern's wide-ranging menu, like appetizers, the famous tavern burger, steaks and chops, and seafood like snow crabs in season. Relax with a nice cold beer and a frozen mug and late-night snacks by the fireplace. The Town Tavern, 600 Market Street, Lewisburg, a place to go for lunch, dinner, or your post-game party. I'm looking for a used car. Close out clearance sale at Valley Toyota. I'm looking for a new 4x2 or 4x4 truck. Close out clearance sale at Valley Toyota. I'm looking for a low mileage car with a future, not a past. Close out clearance sale at Valley Toyota. Don't miss the clearance sale. It could be your last. Mr. Announcer, don't you like clearance sales? I'm just doing my job. Moving cars and trucks out at Valley Toyota. Routes 11 and 15, Sealand Grove. Be there. Basically one quarter to go. 17 seconds remain in the third quarter. It has been all Fordham. They lead it 21 to nothing over Bucknell. Bucknell's offense has sputtered all afternoon. Peter Hardeveld has played the lion's share of the game at quarterback, but the running game has not been there. It has been a listless effort offensively, and the defense once again had the offense turn the ball over in excellent field position. And Kevin, a short drive results in a touchdown. That's right. Seven plays, 30 yards, and 225 total time of the drive and Fordham the table was already set at their own 30. Kicking off will be Hagen for the Rams short high end over end kick Bernardini will be called off by Noteboom will take it at the 23 Noteboom across the 30 out to the 35 to the 36 return of 13 for the freshman wide receiver Steve Noteboom on the tackle for the Fordham Rams on special teams was Mike Montaneri for the Rams Bucknell now with basically a quarter to go to try to make up 21 points they'll have to start first and 10 on their own 36 and they're really behind the eight ball now because they need some scores and they need them in a hurry Klingner Berardinelli go to the left side to the right side it's Bernardini Hardeveld the quarterback behind Fratarelli the center Fordham with a four-man front Hardeveld back to pass Hardeveld throwing it long right side to Bernardini and Bernardini did he catch it yes he caught the ball at the 24. He and Wilt were step for step, and Bernardini caught it on his back, brought it in, and that is the biggest offensive play of the day. 41 yards, Hardeveld to Bernardini, and what a Houdini type catch for Brad. That's the type of play Hardeveld needs to get himself going, and Bernardini leaped in the air with Wilt. Both of them, the ball was tipped, I believe, by Wilt. Bernardini was on his back, and the ball came right down into his hands. Good concentration, though, because he could have just as easily given up on that ball. And that is the end of the third quarter. It ends on a high note for Bucknell. 15 minutes to go. It's Fordham 21, Bucknell nothing, back in 60 seconds. I'll transfer you to pencils one moment, sir. Pencils. Yes, I'd like some number two pencils delivered. I'll transfer you to number two pencils. <sighs> number two pencils. I'd like some number two pencils delivered. Let me transfer you to... <laughs> Listen, all I want is some pencils. Oh, why do you say so? I'll transfer you to pencils. No, wait a minute. Uh, uh, <laughs> if you're tired of a big company run around, Hunsberger Office Supply is for you. It's not a huge impersonal organization, although Hunsberger does offer the very same services you'll find in a larger company. So don't settle for the big company runaround. Look, miss, I just want some pencils. This is ridiculous. I've never been treated so poorly. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I'll transfer you to complaints. <laughs> Hunsberger Office Supply, 2008 West 3rd, Williamsport, phone 326-7492. First and 10 for Bucknell. We believe it's the best field position of the day for the Bison. They have it at the 24 of Fordham. Brad Bernardini showing his speed, got behind Mike Wilt, and then when the ball was floated up there, he was able to bobble it up to himself and then bring the ball in. Great concentration by the junior Brad Bernardini, the track star, in addition to the uh, football player. First and 10 for Bucknell. The lone back is Vargo. Hardeveld has a six-man front for Fordham. Hardeveld back to pass, throwing the timing pattern. Berardinelli at the goal line has it knocked away by Mike Wilt. Bucknell went for the same defender at right side against the cornerback, Mike Wilt, who last year ran a kickoff back to open the game against Bucknell. And uh, Berardinelli and he fought for the ball, and it was knocked away. Yeah, Whitey had that ball in his possession, and Wilt did a good job of stripping the ball away from Berardinelli, and the ball was 
free in the air for right after the play, and uh, luckily for Fordham, the ball was out of bounds. Want to remind you, you're listening to the Bison Sports Network, WTGC Lewisburg, WFXX South Williamsport. Second down and 10 from the Fordham 24. Walsh the lone back, three receivers to the left side. Hardavell will roll to the left side, and he'll be sacked as he's rolling. Geisler will tackle him back at the 34-yard line. It'll be a loss of close to 10 yards on the play, and Fordham now will have Bucknell in a third down and 19 situation as they spot the ball on the Fordham 33. And, Kevin, you've got third-quarter stats. First downs, I think, is the biggest thing that jumps out at, at me. Fordham had 13 first downs total. Bucknell only two. Passing, Bucknell is only 3 of 13 for 56 yards. Fordham 6 of 15 for 58. Passing hasn't been the story, though. The running game has. We'll get back to that after this play. Third down and 19 from the Fordham 33. Walsh Stallone back. Hardeveld backpedals in the pocket. Rush closing in on him. Hardeveld will step up and run. 35, 30, left side. 25, 20. He'll be knocked out of bounds at the 15. Very close to a first down. I think they're going to spot him about a half yard short. The ball is marked on this side of the 15. He had to get to the other side of the 15. It'll be a fourth down and about a half yard to go. And Bucknell with no choice but having to go for it. And they're going to have to. Rushing-wise, Bucknell 23 carries, 13 yards for Fordham, 45 carries for 139 yards. Total offense for Bucknell, only 69 yards, while Fordham has racked up 197 yards of total offense. Hardeveld, 3 of 13 for 56 yards. Pullman, 6 of 15 for 58. Strauss leads in receiving, 3 for 20. And we'll get back to the rest of the stats after this play. Fourth down and a half yard to go. Hardeveld, the quarterback on the sneak, will get the first down inside the 15 to the 14. We'll call it a gain of two for Peter Hardeveld. And that's a big play for Bucknell. They need a shot in the arm offensively. And I think the Bernardini catch on the sideline to end the third quarter may have been that shot in the arm that they needed. Now Hardeveld took, it, took control and uh, got the first down after the sneak. Two first downs on this drive, doubles Bucknell's output of first downs. They had zero until 17 seconds were left in the uh, third quarter when Berard and Bernardini made that catch. Hardeveld tosses to Walsh the short side. Walsh will lose a yard from the 14 back to the 15 on the tackle of Blazewski with help from uh, Geisler and also from Reinert. Hardeveld this afternoon, three out of 14 for 56 yards and again 41 on one play to Bernardini. Second down and 11. 21 nothing in favor of Fordham. Klingner to the right side. Walsh and Berardinelli to the left side. The lone back is Vargo. Fordham with a five man front and they're also cheating some linebackers up. Again on second down and 11 from the 15 and Hardeveld is gonna call a timeout. Bucknell will have one remaining. We'll take it with the Bison. 12.58 to go in the football game. The Rams on top, 21 to nothing, back in 60 seconds. Second down and 11 for Bucknell. 12.58 to go in the football game. They'll have to do it with only one timeout remaining. Klingner to the right side. Berardinelli and Walsh to the left side. Vargo the lone back. The ball on the Fordham 15. It was set up by the 41-yard pass to Brad Bernardini. Hardeveld backpedaling, staying in the pocket, throwing over the middle, and it is intercepted by Brad Jordan. Jordan picked it off at the goal line and comes out to the 17-yard line. A 17-yard return. Whitey Berardinelli is holding his left arm. Looks to be a little bit in pain down there, kind of shaking it out as he kind of got it pinned underneath him. And Bucknell will throw their fourth interception of the day, three of them this afternoon for Peter Hardeville. 
And Jordan did a good job again, like he did in the first quarter, getting in front of Whitey and making the play. Very heads up play by the free safety Jordan, an All-American candidate, and a guy that's been around for four seasons. Six foot, 195 pound senior. First and 10 now for the Rams on their own 16 yard line. They lead it 21 to nothing. Flags fly from all over the place. And we will wait and sort out the penalty. 12.48 to go, 21 to nothing, Fordham. Looks like they're in great position to rack up their first victory of the season and their first Patriot League win ever. And it's procedure against Bucknell. Pullman this afternoon, six out of 15 for only 58 yards. It uh, not reminiscent of a Terry Bradshaw, Ken Stabler kind of showdown in quarterbacking. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of Dan Marino versus Dan Fouts this afternoon. It has been Fordham taking advantage of the ground attack and uh, setting themselves up in good field position against Bucknell. Pullman handing off on that quick hitter to the fullback. On first and 15, Iacello may get a yard or two. Second down, we'll call it 13 coming up for the Rams. Want to remind everybody, midnight madness tonight at Davis Gym. A little dunkathon as well as a scrimmage. Bucknell's team coming off a 21-9 and season from a year ago. They will have to replace two outstanding starters and guard Bill Courtney, who was all league, and forward Pat King, who was the league's MVP. So it'll be a very interesting season. Bucknell, Fordham, and Holy Cross, in my opinion, the top teams in the Patriot League. Second down and 13 for the Rams. Potamousis and Garlic both wide to the left side. The ball on the 13 of Fordham. Fordham will be very conservative. They'll hand it off to Ross, who will spin out across the 15 to the 16. He'll gain another three, and uh, Fordham now will have a third and 10 coming up. Yeah, Fordham's offense has not been sparkling by any means today. It's really been the inefficiency of the Bucknell offense, and it's been Bucknell turning the ball over and setting up good field position for Fordham, and they've taken advantage of that. That's all it pretty much has been. Uh, like you said, Pullman, not a real big day throwing. And, of course, Fordham on the ground has been adequate, but not as good as we've seen. Well, I think the big stat of the day, Bucknell offense, five turnovers. Fordham offense, zero turnovers. Third down and ten now. Pullman, quick kick, giving it to Iacello, who punts it high in the air. Jessup will go back. It'll let it hit, and it'll take a Fordham roll inside the 45 to the 41. Iacello on the punt. Punting it from the 15 to about the 41-yard line, and that should be about a 46-yard kick, if I'm not mistaken, if my addition is correct. First and 10, Bucknell at the 41. Surprising call by Glick. Of course, they have had problems getting those punts off. That so is maybe... true, and you're also ahead 21 to nothing. I mean, you can afford to be conservative when your opponents have not moved the football, they have nothing on the scoreboard, they're down three touchdowns, and only have one timeout remaining. First and 10, Bison from the 41. Five-man front, or check it, four-man front for Fordham. Hardeveld back to pass. Hardeveld will be sacked back at the 37-yard line. The man really to trip him up was Aaron Dockerty. Dockerty had help from a couple of others, including Geisler. And Hardeveld's been flushed out of that pocket pretty much the entire day. He hasn't had a lot of time to set up and throw the ball. He's been flushed. And even on design rollouts, he's been sacked. So Hardeveld has not had the protection that he would like. Hardeveld back to pass, throws it underneath, and it's off the hands of fullback Joe Vargo. Mark Blazewski was on the coverage. And it'll now be a third down and 13 coming up for Bucknell. 10.46 to go in the game. Other Patriot League scores, Lafayette on top of Colgate, 27 to 21, 11 minutes to go in that one. And Holy Cross continues to lead Lehigh, 28 to 17, nine minutes and change to go in the third. So that Lafayette-Colgate game has been seesawing back and forth. Lafayette ahead by six, but nothing that a touchdown and an extra point couldn't switch around. Third down and 13 for Bucknell from their own 38-yard line. Hardeveld play fakes to McElveen, back to pass, throws it long and throws it way over the head of Mark Gentilly. VC had coverage for Fordham incomplete. Freilich will punt it again. Hardeveld now three out of 17 this afternoon. And Hardeveld forced that throw because not only was VC there, but Chris Tyrone as well was in the area. And it was double coverage on Gentilly. And another forced throw. Luckily it was up high because that may have been picked off as well. Fordham's gonna get the football back. Fordham with token rush. Freilich with the kick, not as good as his last one. Jordan will let it bounce and then shy away. And Bucknell will down it on the 35. About a 26, 27 yard punt that time for Freilich. 
And Fordham will start at first and 10 from outside their own 35 at about their own 36. And Fordham right now, I think, Kevin, just going to be more interested in running time off the clock. I don't. I think Fordham feels they have enough points to win the game. I don't think they feel threatened that Bucknell is going to score three times. Oh, there's no question. Bucknell's offense, a new quarterback, not doing the job today. And, uh, of course, they're just going to run the ball, like you said. There's no doubt about it. Bucknell, one timeout remaining. So uh, Fordham's just going to hang in there and try to run as much time off the clock as they can. Pullman, the quarterback. The lone back is Ross. Ross will get it. He'll carry over left tackle. Flag down. Probably a hold against Fordham. Jessup grabbing him on the jersey of uh, Ross. Ross would have the first down on a 13-yard gain, but I don't think it's going to count. The flag came down real, real early, and from where the officials are marking it, i got to bet it's a hold against Fordham, and it is. Going back to a point I was going to make before they snapped the ball, Kevin, if you had told me that Garlic would have no catches today and Potamusis would have one, I would say Fordham would get routed. I think you'd be definitely right if you told me that before the game because that was pretty much the bread and butter of the Fordham Ball Club. Inefficiency on the ground, but yet they make up for in the pass, and Pullman has not thrown for that much yardage. Potamusis, one catch for 20 yards, I believe, and that was the one way back in the first quarter where Noel had the missed tackle inside the 20, and then also Garlic has been pretty much shut down but, gee, Bucknell has given the game to him on a silver platter. I don't think you need any kind of receivers when you turn the ball over five times. And especially when it's in your own end. First down and 20. Hand off to Ross. Ross out across the 25 to the 28. He'll get three. Second down and 18 coming up. Down under 10 minutes to go in the football game. If you're looking ahead to the rest of the season, Bucknell will go to Lehigh next week. Our airtime, 12.30 on the Bison Sports Network, WTGC Lewisburg, and... WFXX South Williamsport. Bucknell has never lost at Goodman Stadium. They are 2-0. And both games down there have been barn burners that Bucknell has had to rally in the fourth quarter. And then Bucknell will finish at home on the 14th with Lafayette and the 21st against Colgate. So quite a few home football games remaining to be played at Christy Matheson Stadium. Pullman play fakes. Back to pass on second and 18. Throws it and it's knocked down by Ed Jackson, the linebacker. The pass appeared to be intended for either Ayacello or Potamusas downfield, but Jackson did a nice job of getting his hand in the way. He sure did, and I think that pass was intended for Potamusas. The ball was up in the air. Jackson had to leap, and he did a great job of knocking that ball away because Potamusas did find a soft spot in the Bucknell zone, and that would have been a pretty big gainer if, that, if he would have came down with it. Third down now and 18. Fordham trying to keep the drive alive from their perspective. The incompletion doubly wrong because that stops the clock. Garlic to the left, Potamusas to the right, Ayacello the lone back. They picked up big gains on a third down quick hitter. They'll try it again, and Ayacello this time will only get two yards. So the third time on third down of that's tried, it gets nothing, and uh, Fordham will punt with Steve Muzanegro coming back on to kick. Bernardini and Walsh will go back to return it, and you get the feeling that if you've got some kind of a strategy or a play to try to block a punt, this would be the time to, to pull it out, Kevin, because uh, the uh, Bison uh, are going to need something in a hurry to get back in this game. And they're going to need some sort of field position as well, the way their offense has been not moving the ball. Nine men at the line. Mozenegro ready for the snap. Here comes the rush. He gets it away and gets one of his better kicks. Bernardini will catch it at the 35, get a Walsh block to get to the 40, out to the 45-yard line, a 10-yard return for Brad Bernardini. On the tackle that time for uh, Fordham special team is Greg Erdelli. And it'll be first and 10 buck now at the 45, their own, and Rob Gluss is back in at quarterback. 37-yard punt for Muzanigro. So Fordham this afternoon has played musical kickers. Bucknell is playing musical quarterbacks. Neither tune has been to the pleasure of each team. Eight and a half minutes to go. Bucknell down 21 to nothing. Gluss back to pass. Big rush comes. Gluss gets away on the right side and then throws it in the ground, and he's going to be hit with a grounding penalty, and that was obvious. Very obvious. Nobody in the vicinity of the flat where he threw the ball. The only guy in the flat was deep, and that was... Zabelski, who was running down in a fly pattern on the right sideline. And, and that'll be a loss of down and I believe a five-yard penalty from the spot. So the flag will be marked off from the 36-yard line. So you can give him a sack to the 36. So he loses nine on the sack and then loses five more on the penalty back to the 31. 
So Bucknell on the loss of down will now look at a second down and 25 to go for a first down. <clears throat> Everything has gone wrong offensively this afternoon for Bucknell. Berardinelli and Garner to the left side. Vargo in the slot, Walsh the lone uh, tailback. Gluss will roll to the left side, Fordham chasing. They know he's going to throw, and coming up with the uh, sack in the backfield is Pat O'Doherty. Actually, he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. We'll call it no gains for Gluss that time. It'll now be third down and 25, and Kevin, it is so much easier for the defensive line when they don't have to respect run, and they certainly don't, with the Bucknell trailing at 21 nothing. Gluss out of the shotgun, will throw left side, and bounces it to uh, Berardinelli at the 45-yard line, and that's a very quick Lawrence Welk-type drive, a one, a two, a three, a punt, and uh, Fordham's going to get the football back with eight minutes to go and a chance to uh, work on the clock. And the clock definitely will get worked on because we're looking, in, um, we're at the eight-minute mark now, and uh, Bucknell's offense just non-existent today. That's all you could really say. Freilich will punt, punting from the 30. It's going to take a bounce at the Fordham 40 and roll back up field to the 43-yard line. And it'll be a 27-yard kick as he lost three yards on the roll. No return for Bucknell. And Fordham, again, with good field position. They'll start it. I guess officially they're going to mark it at the 44-yard line. So a 26-yard punt that time for Jason Freilich. Bucknell had really one good chance to score. That was on the 41-yard pass in the closing moments of the third quarter that uh, Hardeveld hit Bernardini for a first down. Got him down to about the 25-yard line and then uh, Brad Jordan intercepted at the goal line and that's been the bulk of Bucknell scoring chances this afternoon. Fordham has 21 on the board and it could be a lot more. First and 10 Rams from their own 44. Handoff to Ross. Ross will get two to the 46. Jan Kilpalainen and Shane Limpis throw Ross back. Second and eight coming but the play in the middle of the field is exactly what Fordham wants, and they're going to work another 25 to 40 seconds off the clock right here. They sure will. They're just going to try to keep the ball on the ground and run that clock right down. I think the last thing they want to do is throw an incomplete, play, incomplete pass and stop it. Bob, I think this game was pretty much won by Fordham way back in the opening moments of the second half. I think when Bucknell had him on the ropes, that those two quick-hitting plays that they gained big yardage and really turned the tide and then led to the touchdown. I think if Bucknell held them there, they would have had good field position, and who knows what would have happened. Good point. Pullman, handoff to Iacello on second down and eight. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage for no gain. It's still second and eight, down under seven minutes to go. You're right, Fordham was going to be pinned back inside their own 10-yard line on a punting situation, and there were like two third-down plays on the quick hitters on long-range third-down situations. Bucknell let them out of the hole and that allowed field position to change. They didn't get a score on that play, but I think you're right. I think it eventually led to the uh, to the uh, touchdown by Pullman. Yeah, following the lost sack, it looked like Bucknell was going to get the ball in great field position, and then, boom, a 17-yard quick hit play up the middle that pretty much, I think, turned the tide. Third down and eight. Iacello in motion out of the backfield to the left side. Pullman tosses to Ross. Ross will run into a sea of blue at the 40, cut back to the middle, and then Shane Lippis will drag him down at the 36. It'll be a loss of 11 on the play. And a lot of times, you know, the old saying, cut your losses. I think it was a very good uh, thing right there because if uh, Ross had just kind of stopped where he was initially, he would have lost maybe five yards. Instead, he loses about 10 on the play. And a bison is shaken up maybe at the 40-yard line. I believe it's Dan Zapp who's down. Dan was down once earlier today. We've got a timeout on the field. The score, it is Fordham 21, Bucknell nothing. We'll be back with more here from Christy Matheson Stadium after this 60-second timeout. Enjoy all the benefits of West Milton State Bank's Senior Bankers Club. They've combined the services you want with the travel you dream about. Find out more during the Senior Bankers Club open house now through November 7th. Enjoy free refreshments and ask about free checking, social events, day trips, and travel tours. Attend the Senior Bankers Club Open House, going on now through November 7th at the best bank in your neighborhood, West Milton State Bank in West Milton and Lewisburg. Member FDIC. Looking for a car or truck dealership that will treat you the way you'd like to be treated, the way your parents were treated when they were looking to buy a vehicle when they were your age? Then come into Anchor Oldsmobile Pontiac GMC and see the friendly salespeople. We carry a large inventory of new Oldsmobiles, Pontiacs, and GMC trucks. We also have one of the finest used car selections in the three-county area. Come in and see us at Anchor Oldsmobile, Pontiac GMC, on Route 15 in Lewisburg. The right car at the right price. 
While we were away, Dan Zappa was able to walk off under his own power. Muzanigro with a punt of 50 yards that time. Bucknell will start it on their own 21. A five-yard return as the punt was actually kicked to the 16-yard line. Walsh on the return. All week during practice, Zappa was bothered by those neck stingers and... Uh, he even missed some time during practice, and I think he's been bothered by a couple of those today. A wipeout out in the mountains, out in the Rockies. In the second quarter, it is Brigham Young, 27, Penn State, 3. Wow. Very, very surprising. Probably more surprising than the Fordham 21. Bucknell, nothing score that we're witnessing here this afternoon. First down and 10 for Bucknell. Hardevelle back to pass. Hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Intended on a screen for McElveen and unloading, lowering the boom was a backup defensive end, Aaron Torgler, a sophomore, who this season has three sacks for Fordham. He didn't get it that time, but really forced Hardeveld to throw it before he wanted it. You know, I don't think I've seen Hardeveld get off a pass cleanly yet today. He's always had somebody on his back. He's been hit every time. Even on design rollouts, he's been sacked. He just hasn't had a whole lot of time to do anything, and I don't really fault him as much as I do the offensive line. I think it's a mix of both. It has been a group effort of poorness this afternoon for the uh, Bucknell offense. Hardeveld throwing it to Garner. It's off his fingertips and nearly intercepted by John Clarkson. Incomplete. It'll now be third and ten. And it looks like Damon Garner landed funny and is injured. Julie Augustine, the Bucknell trainer, will come out to take a look at uh, Damon. He may have gotten popped or he may have just landed funny as he came down because he jumped up in the air to try to catch that ball. We're down to 534 to go in the game. 21 to nothing for them. It has been Bucknell miscues this afternoon offensively that have set the Rams up and have appeared to have uh, locked up their first win ever in the Patriot League. Well, on that play, Garner mishandled the pass. It went off his hands, and then Mike Wilt kept hitting him, picked him right up and dumped him right on his back. He may have just gotten the wind knocked out of him. But Fordham is is taking no prisoners. They came in here today really fired up, saying, hey, we're getting a win today, and they stepped right in here and really took control right from uh, the opening whistle. Well, I'll tell you what, if you give the intensity check in this game as far as like to which side, it has been all for them. We talked with Lou Maranzana in the pregame about a good start, about getting the team fired up in intensity, and Bucknell this afternoon, if you're grading them for intensity and being fired up, gets an F in this afternoon's ball game. They have looked absolutely listless. They have played with no intensity. Third down and 10. Hardeveld has one back. That's Vargo behind him. Hardeveld facing a four-man rush. This time has time. Now the rush closes in on him, and Hardeveld will scramble out of bounds and lose two back to the 19-yard line. You can give that as a cover sack to Fordham because Hardeveld had some time initially and really had enough time, to, I thought, to get the pass away, but Fordham's defensive backs did a nice job blanketing Bucknell's receivers. And they've done that pretty much the whole day. Whitey, I believe, has been shut out today. He has been shut out. His weakest game of the year was one catch, and that was against uh, Dartmouth, I believe. Freilich will punt from his own 19. Jordan and Tyrone back to return it. They are standing inside of Bucknell territory. Down to 5.26 to go in the game. Fordham will play totally for the return. Freilich's kick will be fielded on the 47 by Jordan. Across the 45 to the 43, it'll be a return of four for Brad Jordan. And a 27-yard kick that time for Jason Freilich. And the two teams, Kevin, just kind of exchanging punts. But all the while, while this is happening, the clock is running down. And that's playing right into Fordham's hands. It sure is. We're at the 5.15 mark here in the fourth quarter. And I'll tell you, there's nobody more than Larry Glick that wants that clock to expire because they have lost 12 straight. And a lot of people may not know this, but they have never won a Patriot League ball game. And today that is all going to change. This is their third season. Fordham with the ball, first and 10 on their own, um, excuse me, on the Bucknell, 42. They hand off to Helberson. Helberson inside the 40. He has got great leg strength. He just takes that pile down near the 35-yard line. We'll call it a gain of eight for Helberson. So check it, gain of seven as they mark him just short of the 35. But he's had several plays where he has just made the pile move. A couple of things about Fordham. When they were Division Three under Larry Glick, they were 23-9-1. The last three seasons they've been in 1AA, they have combined for a 5 and 30 mark so again it has been a tough road to hoe coming to 1AA from Division 3 and anybody that doesn't think that that's a big jump should just look at Fordham because they were one of the more dominating Division 3 uh, football teams in the Northeast. Second down and three from the 36 handoff again to Helverson. Helverson met in the backfield reverses his field and he'll go down back at the 40 he'll lose four on the play should have lost about one but again tried to make something out of nothing and he'll end up losing three more. 
The other thing that's interesting, Kevin, rumors were swirling that maybe some people didn't want Larry Glick to return next year to the to the Fordham program. There was it even went as far as that the student paper at Fordham had a poll as to whether they wanted Glick to remain or not. Most of those things are usually touch and go, but 95% of the respondents said yes, that Larry Glick should stay as head coach at Fordham. And uh, again, he deserves a lot of credit for getting his team on a 12-game losing streak fired up, and uh, they basically have just taken a two-buck now this afternoon. They really have. They've come in here really fired up. And you can't really, I mean, a lot of people look at wins and losses being the true barometer of a, win, a, a program. I think Glick's program has grown over the years. They have not won a whole lot of games, but you got to look at how they lost three or four games this year. God, they had victory in their grasp, and they just they couldn't get the job done. They were oh so close. And today, I think if it, you know if you're doubting Fordham, I think the doubts can be thrown right out the window because this Fordham team can give anybody a fit on any given day. Penalty against Bucknell gives Fordham a first down at the 31 of Bucknell, so the sticks get reset. 4-10 to go in the football game. A nightmare on Halloween for Bucknell, and Fordham has been very good on Halloween as Helverson goes over left guard. Ed Jackson will make the tackle out of about a three-yard gain. Fordham on Halloween, on October 31st, has only lost one game ever. They have five wins, one loss, and two ties, so uh, trick-or-treat has been kind to the Fordham Rams over the years. And now Fordham can... Are probably are glad that the months of September and October are over. November's dawning, and uh, they end October on a winning note. The last they waited to the last day of October to get that first win, but yet another Bison is down. Steve Zinder, the assistant trainer, is out to uh, take a look at uh, this Bucknell player. I cannot tell from where I am sitting who is down for Bucknell. Maybe Shane Limpus. Shane Limpus has been bothered by an injured ankle throughout a lot of the season. And, of the and uh, you're right, it is Shane, and it does look like it's the ankle. And he's walking very gingerly. And coming into the game for Bucknell will be a freshman uh, defensive lineman. I believe that is John Hart, excuse me, that's come out to help uh, Olympus, or maybe that's Ed Fratarelli, the center. I was thinking maybe it was the second double number 70 coming in, but I was fooled it was Fratarelli coming out to to help Limpus, so my apologies to you at home or you listening in the stands for calling the wrong guy into the game. Second down and seven after the three yard gain. 340 and counting to go. Garlic has been shut out as has Berard and Ellie and they were our two players to watch in the pregame show, so so much for our knowledge of picking out the key players in the game. Potamusis and Helberson also go to the right side. Ayacello in the backfield. He'll carry straight up the middle. He'll get maybe a yard or two to the 26-yard line, clock running. When the next play is snapped, there'll be less than three minutes to go. And you can pretty much put this one in the books right now as Fordham will get the big monkey off its back. Of course, Larry Glick and the whole Fordham program, and it has to be a real tough burden to carry around that you have not won a game in your league. And uh, finally, you can throw that out the window for the Fordham Rams. Third down now and four as the ball just inside the 26. They have to get to the 21 for a first down. I would think Fordham will go for it on fourth down, not wanting a chance of either a block punt, which wouldn't help you much anyway if you're punting from just about the 25, or a field goal chance. It could be blocked in return for a score. Pullman giving it off to Ross, or check it, that's Helverson. Helverson will lose a yard back to the 26-yard line, and we'll see what the Rams are going to want to do here on fourth down in about five. And with two and a half minutes to go, it appears that they are going to go for it. And if nothing else, run some more time off before they snap the ball. No gain on the play. There'll be less than two minutes to go if Pullman is able to keep an eye on the 25 second clock in the right corner of the end zone because it'll expire at 1.59. If he can wait until the last minute. Good Parents Day crowd today, but most of them or a lot of them have left with the cold and the poor play this afternoon by the Bison. And Fordham is gonna take the delay of game penalty and they'll lose five yards. Actually, what I would have done if I was Fordham that time, Kevin, is called one of my three timeouts with one second left on the 25-second uh, clock. You don't need your three timeouts, and that would save you five yards, and you can come in and go for it. It's true. It's a very good point. I think it's the last thing you need when you're up 21 to nothing with two minutes left in a, in a ball game is timeouts. Maybe they like to sell a few to Bucknell. <laughs> Fourth down and 11 now after they run it all the way down and take the delay of game penalty. They're going to go for it. 
I guess when you're ahead 21 to nothing, though, there are really no bad decisions late in the game. Pullman handing it off to Iacello inside the 30, inside the 20, and he's going to get the first down again. Once again, Iacello, that's the third time today, has needed better than 10 yards on either a third or fourth down, and he gets it. Now, wait a second. They're going to mark him out of bounds. It appears at the 22, so he is not going to get it, but he was very close. Bucknell's offense is going to come out on the field, but uh, I thought he had gotten the first down again, Kevin. He gets the better part of 10 yards that time. He needed 11, and Bucknell gets very lucky that they're going to get the football back. Very lucky, because Bucknell has been very susceptible to that run on third and long, and it's hard to believe because, especially those off-tackler, quick-hitter plays, you figure that they'd be easy to stop, especially with third and long. And Bucknell has been burned big time. And I think it's really cost him here in the second half, especially early on when the momentum, I think, could have been turned around. Bucknell handed off to Vargo. This will be the longest run from scrimmage across the 40-yard line to the 43. It'll be a gain of 21 to Joe Vargo. And Bucknell goes with a little Joe quick Vargo. hitter that time. And Fordham just in the prevent defense, a minute 40 to go. Bucknell is going to see if they can't put some points on the board. And a Fordham player is shaken up on the sideline. Down here in the fourth quarter, we've seen some, some injuries, some players maybe getting a little tired and having the wind knocked out of them and some ankles getting twisted and some necks getting stung. And it's also a chance for these players to get their last licks in <laughs> until 93, and some of them the last chance to get licks in against each other. For Bucknell and Fordham, the series is going to even up at uh, four apiece. Fordham had the edge, winning three out of four from 1929 to 1932. Bucknell had won the last three years in a row as Gloss completes his first pass of the game That's to Corey Zayats. It'll be the first completion of the day for Rob Gloss. Bucknell will go without a huddle. So the teams will be even at four apiece. Minute 20 to go. Gloss out of the shotgun. Gloss over the middle to Vargo. Makes the catch for a gain of like three to the 48-yard line. 110 to go. Bucknell trying to avoid the shutout. The last time that Bucknell was shut out was early this season at Villanova when they lost 34 to nothing. Gluss throwing it out on the right flat, intending it for Berardinelli, incomplete. It is now fourth down and two from the Fordham 48 with 56 seconds to go. And Whitey trying to get at least one catch on the afternoon, and that time it went out of bounds and the ball popped out. I don't think even if he came down with it, I don't believe it would have been in a reception anyways because he was far out of bounds. And uh, Bucknell basically couldn't get it going on the ground. They forced to go to the pass, and they just they couldn't get anything offensively going. Vargo on three carries is the leading rusher with 23 yards on the day. Fourth down and two. Gluss hands it off to Vargo, and I think he may be tripped up short. Vargo on the carry. tackle that time for Ford and reserve defensive end Jeff Rupp. It's going to be very, very close. They're going to measure with 50 seconds to go. And from where it's sitting, eh, it might be good. It's very close. It's either going to be Fordham ball or Bucknell first and 10 at the 46 of Fordham. Again, our airtime next Saturday, 12.30. From Lehigh, the final road game of the year. Then two home games to close it, the 14th and the 21st of November against Lafayette and Fordham. And I was correct. It is short by about... An inch or two, Fordham will take over, and Fordham is going to have to fall on the ball once or maybe twice, and they will win this game by the count of 21 to nothing. And it's not surprising that Bucknell did not get the first down. The way things have been going all day offensively, it's just pretty much par for the course for the Bison. Scores of other Patriot League games, Lafayette still maintains a six-point lead over Colgate, 34 to 28. That's with three minutes and 46 seconds to go in the game. Holy Cross now is leading by only three against Lehigh, 28 to 25 with seven minutes to go in the game. Pullman will take the knee, 48 seconds to go, and Fordham will have to snap it once more, and they will win this game by the count of 21 to nothing. Not a real good offensive game for Bucknell this afternoon. We'll have all the totals at the end of this one. Down under 30 seconds to go. And Fordham has got to be very excited. Larry Glick had better watch a Gatorade bath over there on a very cold day. I would think that Fordham would be very tempted to try something like that. Pullman will down it, 13 seconds, 12 to go, and they don't have to snap it again. And Fordham with the huge victory, their first Patriot League win ever, defeats Bucknell 
They beat him in a route, 21 to nothing. Bucknell now falls to three and five overall, 0 and two in the Patriot League. Fordham now one and seven, and they are now one and three in the Patriot League. We're gonna pause for this final game action break. Kevin and I will be back with uh, some thoughts before we head into the post game show. Again, the final Fordham 21, Bucknell nothing, back in 60 seconds. Our letter today brought to you by Wendy's and its founder Dave Thomas. A customer writes, Dear Dave, yes. 